Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can create an acrylic, a painting from our wonderful reference photo of an autumn forest. Now we're going to get deep into this. I'm going to go big. This particular class, I'm actually going to demo, and this is really based on your suggestions, demo several brushes for the leaf technique so you can go through your brush bucket and find the best one. So I've got a plan for that. We're going to show you how to get those distant trees like you were talking about and how to create, even in this sort of monochromatic because it's a very red and orange painting a sense of depth and space on the mic is my husband john hello he has been helping me bring you these lessons for 10 years and we're going to keep doing this probably for another 10 or as as long as i'm able um i so appreciate you guys making this class because we had to bump it uh from its scheduled time thursday to friday because we had some family stuff come up um i've got an eldest who's got a birthday and i've got two littles that have school you know stuff to do for their festivals and the halloween stuff so it's just been you know and of course they come in last minute and they're like didn't you know that we needed that three weeks ago <laughs> and you're just like wait no there's no way so i appreciate everyone being uh really um uh, understanding about this I think you're going to be so surprised about the painting you get I love this time we get to spend together just chatting and hanging out and painting and if you're here for the first time and you're shy I have to say it's a great group of people to say hi to because they say hi back and they're really nice and if they don't it's just because the chat went by fast and you say hi again they will find you they're really kind people and we're going to just be in here all together today painting together this fabulous autumn scene and i have fun stuff to show you um i did make a color change and let's go over the materials so i can tell you about that all right gonna tell you all about it got your little reference up there oh, I had the your little reference boop, boop, boop. i love how everyone's like is this or is this not friday is it friday yeah so i i am coming to terms with how how uh spicy my brain is and i've known that for a long time but I'm kind of going through my own journey, and I really relate to not knowing that it's Friday. You know but I, I feel like if I could have known it was Friday, I would have known it was Friday. It's I have alarms Friday. and post-it notes everywhere. You ain't got no job. You ain't got no place to be. So we're just going to paint. I think I think this is our job, sweetheart. That was a Friday reference. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a literal person. Sometimes <laughs> I forget. I get confused by the joke. So... I, I don't know what to tell you. I am. Here's what. I'm going to start getting real real with y'all. <laughs> I'm here. I got my little nails in the ledge. I'm going to say like officially. I think I've officially come to the moment where my uh, uh, attention deficit. I'm somewhere in the spectrum of that. I actually think I might have some limbic and some other stuff going on. I got to go back in and get it reevaluated. It might be ha having. So if I just forget things. I'll remember them later. Don't worry. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> things are fine. I always get there. I've been coping with this for like most of my life, though. I do think I'm going to go in and look for some new strategies. All right. First. Oh, first I have to tell you the materials. No, See? It, what are we spicy doing? brain. What are we using? 11 by 14 canvas. I'm back. Don't go away. I am like the most awesome teacher. I just get you a little are. smeckled. Ultramarine blue. This is zinc white. Zinc white is more transparent than titanium white, and that's why we're going to have it here. Cad red medium. I've got uh, cad yellow. Uh, I've got yellow ochre. I've got this is gl satin glazing liquid. You can use the gloss if you have it. Mars black, burnt sienna. I have. Um, oh, I did ultramarine blue, and this is the titanium white in the center. I may plop out the oxazine purple. Um, cause sometimes that gives me a really fantastic deep red instead of phthalo blue. Um, and because I just don't think the phthalo is going to get me the result I want in deepening my red. Phthalo or black can give you a nice deep brick color, but Docs does something else weird. So I think I'm going to do that. You can just use a black if you don't have dioxazine purple to get the shade of it. And what is most important in painting, and here is the trick to like, kind of painting everywhere all painting all the time is value is the biggest deal so how light or dark something is is a much bigger deal than what color it is you can paint somebody blue if you get all their values right they're gonna i literally did you're gonna get a face in spite of the blueness so you hang in with me shall we throw up a step yes all right <laughs> you know what hmm. i put down the tube of paint i wanted somewhere sensible and you can find it like just after talking to you 
about being forgetful. That I yeah, think totally. is very funny. So let's put up some love. Uh, this is October is uh, ADHD Awareness Month, and of course I found that out li- late. So let's put up some love for all of our neurodivergent, spicy brain loved mm-hmm. ones who are standing in the corner wondering how they got there after starting 23 projects and getting distracted on a conversation they're having with you. Love for them! Because <laughs> we need it. We need the love. So you don't have to put out your burnt sienna on your canvas like this. I just like doing it. It's fun for me. It's very, very, very fun for me. But it's not a necessary uh, element of the technique. I just need to paint the whole canvas burnt sienna. Now, let's talk about why we would do this. The reason sometimes artists will paint their canvas a solid color instead of doing a value study in paint first, that's a kind of painting sketch where you have all the lights or darks in one color. The reason we do that is that, uh, one, acrylic loves to stick to acrylic paint. So it does make your blending techniques, your dry brushing techniques, all your stuff a little bit easier. But also, it makes your pieces feel more finished and more professional, even when you're starting out. Because one of the things that a beginner, and weirdly a very experienced painter will do, is leave a lot of white in the canvas showing. Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's a funny thing you can't even say to your students this is a rule don't leave white showing because I mean Mondrian right so I'm not arguing with the Smithsonian or masters I'm just saying for most of us in painting for those of us that are painting for the joy of it and uh, you know we're not trying to raise the consciousness of the whole world through a painting um, we're just making our world a little more beautiful having the surface covered is helpful and it looking more professional and more finished if you're a person who can leave the canvas white, you know who you are. <laughs> hmm. And you're not watching my show because you're busy putting together your next show. And you don't know that I'm wishing you well out there in the world, hoping that you're good, professional artist that you are, taking risks, leaving your canvas showing. Bless you. I hope you're great. <laughs> Maybe somebody somewhere got a little sparkle. They don't know from where. They don't know from how, but they just were in the studio feeling like, you know, I weirdly feel some love from some random corner of the world. There's random love. Just random love. Lots of love. I think the same way that hate carries, love carries. And I know hate makes a bigger splash and gets more clicks and pulls people in. It's not for me. Yeah, so good for social media. But you know what love does? Love makes life worth living. Mm -hmm. Love makes dinner worth eating. Love makes the hard times endurable. So I'm on team love. Let's try this canvas and we'll get on to the next step. So, guys, so nice to see everybody out here. So nice for you guys to join us. Don't forget to check out our website, theartsherpa.com. From there, you'll be able to join uh, the SMS messenger and the uh, newsletter list. Our newsletter has been crazy, folks. So if you've been having trouble with email to us, it's not you. Our email service has been brokered. Uh, we're fixing it, it, but it's been a couple days. So if you've had trouble over the past couple days, it's us and we're working on it. We're super sorry. Um, it is intermittently working because we're transferring things from one place to another. And when you transfer them one place to another, sometimes they don't like it. Or it takes time to do what they call populate changes across the DNS servers, which is a fancy way of saying we got to update the map for the computer to find out where our stuff is now at. And, uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of some stuff that's going on. Email changes, and they are hard to make. So, hopefully. Oh, thank you, Heather. Thank you, guys. Uh, really nice to see everybody and, and be part of all y'all's day. So thank you for being here with us. She's got that thoroughly drying. Thoroughly drying. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, I was just reading here with uh, Gil- uh, A. Gilamesh. There's a kid inside me telling me to say, make the painting a, a crazy moments. Yay! I'm with that. What? So, uh, G- uh, see, A. Gilamesh was saying, make the painting a crazy moments. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I want to thank, um, wait, it, Heather C., thank you mm-hmm. so much. And I want to agree with Darcy. Love makes the world go round. It needs to. And those of us that lead with love, I think we need to stop being silent. And I think we need to start speaking 
speaking love to anger and just be like it in the right way we can say anything um in the world and we can say it kindly you know who had something to say about that the beatles <laughs> i didn't know where you were going <laughs> <laughs> you're like oh no this could go left <laughs> no you know what it's not gonna go left because here's what i think we can all act like grown-ups now what i'm gonna do at this stage and this is going to help us lay this out if you're having trouble ever laying out where objects belong on a surface in relationship to your image this is a great trick so i'm going to come here and i'm going to divide this canvas in half so if this is an 11 by 14 then five and a half is the halfway point here right and then the halfway uh uh yeah five and a half is the halfway point here and then seven is uh the halfway point vertically so i'm going to come up here just for a second and i'm going to make a horizontal line if it will let me and i may switch it to paint if it won't um sometimes if you don't have your uh paint dry 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 dry, dry the t square doesn't work this tool is a t i'm going to switch to paint not my favorite but i'm going to do it so you can see it okay i'll try the yellow maybe the yellow will be less usually do oh there you go it's just so what happens is you can actually burnish or polish your chalk if you use it a lot and then it won't get off your chalk thing. <laughs> and I've used that so much that I have to now take some sandpaper and rough it up because it's been polished past the point of working. Because your surface is rough. Believe it or not, it's a type of grit and it wears down your brushes and it wears down your chalk and it can polish it. Strange problems that you didn't know you could have. And then I'm going to make this vertical. Now the reason for this is because it's going to really help me see even when my brain is messing with me can they see you guys can see it you don't need to it doesn't need to be a big mark on there you can use kids chalk chalkboard chalk paint lots of things but this lets me know so i have an upper right quadrant a lower right quadrant a lower left quadrant and an upper left quadrant remember how earlier in the video we said we were nurse uh, well, i'm neurospicy john's like <laughs> neuro pepper x spicy yes <laughs> he he's pepper x spike you you don't know anything until you've gotten into a john project and you realize he's gonna like build the biggest thing in the world <laughs> and you just wanted to make a campfire and he wants to make a uh, birdie man so neuro spicy um so as we go i may mix up right and left don't stress on that that is completely fine um, but it just lets you know where on the canvas that we're working so that when we're laying things out, you don't have any difficulty finding it. Now, I'm going to pick just a regular old brush brush. And for this next part, John's going to throw up another step. Here's the issue with the steps. Just that you just want that. I put a step right up on the crib before the crisscross. Oh, before the crisscross. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, then never mind. Okay. I just we're going to sketch it like, in. Step, step, step. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I think I'll use a little bit of my yellow ochre and a little titanium white. That'll, that'll work out really well. This is the halfway point. At the halfway point, down, oh, maybe about an inch and over is the back of the trail, right about here, right? And the trail kind of comes off towards the right, just a little past the halfway point. Then over here, the trail kind of comes in maybe a little bit and then starts to kind of curve out a, a little and I think actually more to here more to this outer corner now we have our trail in but our leaf our leaf fall it's much wider than that isn't it so our leaf fall can go almost all the way to London here and I'm going to say over on the left hand side it's down to here And it's going to arc in a very similar way to our path. But this one is not going to be a little straighter. And that's going to be an interesting little space. So we're going to bring that off just up past this corner. Then I've got this here. This will be distant in between these two columns is my distant forest, right? And I will be seeing sky kind of coming in at an angle this way. Where you'll start to see just, just a little bit of sky. And see how this now honestly this layout is 99 percent of your forest trail going into a distance i worked in my mom's studio painted a lot of these things uh, and i have put this trail here and i put the trail here and i had it up here and down here and i've changed the perspective but really 
Generally, there's a corridor. This is where your light's going to be. Then you have dispersing foliage and objects coming out this way. Everything's sort of radially coming in to the light point, creating our focus. So that's kind of fun. We're going to call that a step. All right. Okay. I'm going to use the same brush. This is a Catalyst number no. 6 by Princeton. Just a brush. And I am going to use titanium white here. And I'm going to grab just a smidge. And I mean, it's lighter than you think of the ultramarine blue. Believe it or not, in a lot of these types of bright, clear day um, situations, when you look at the sky, it's almost white in value compared to everything around it, more than blue. Even when you're out plein air painting, it's brighter than you think. And so a lot of times you have to paint it twice as bright as you think you do. Now I'm not going to come past this point here because there's just not really any blue past here. It's going to be our distant, distant yellow. So I can rinse out a little bit. I'm going to grab a little bit of my ultramarine, uh, I mean not my ultramarine, my yellow ochre and my cad yellow. And I'm going to have just so little on here. Da, 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 da. See how very light that is. Yeah can even have just a smidge of ultramarine blue in it to, to almost take it biased a little green. Wonderful message there from Amy when you're ready. Is there a wonderful message? Would you read that Amy message? I'm going to grab some of my glazing medium to blend these two areas sort of she together. Says, Whatever happened yesterday, I want a reminder that the fla all the flowers bloom in adversity and, all the, and the most beautiful and rare of all. Oh, I, what is, I'm sorry, I reread. The flower I love that blooms that. in adversity is, is the, the most, most beautiful, beautiful flower of all. Like yeah. a thistle. Like a <laughs> yeah, you know, the it's an interesting thing because I think like, you know, some days are like they're they're challenging and they're not, if that makes sense. Like they're challenging because so much stuff is going on or it throws your schedule off. I mean, like everything is fine and you're okay, but you're also like you just want to curl up into a little tight blanket burrito roll with just your little face hanging out like your, you know, Lido from Dune. And that's very, if you know that joke, you, you laughed right now. And then you're looking at your little Lido from Dune thing huh. at your TV, just watching your stuff. So <laughs> it's a journey, but everything was fine. It was just a crazy day. Just too much stuff kind of came in at once. All right, I think that that is pretty good looking. I like, I like that it. a lot, and I'm going to dry it. Okay, you dry it. You I'm going to just dry it, That man. was just some little strokes there. I'm going to just do some little strokes there. All right, that was just some little, just, just fast. So, yeah, thank you, guys. It was, you know, we have, we have up days and down days and good days and bad days, and, you know, it's been a little bit, uh, it's been a little bit crazy, but things are... Things are settling, you know. It's a. Uh, it 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 is. It's 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 nice to be able to come back here today. We really woke up this morning and made an intention to be calm throughout the day, so we could get here and have a really nice show with you. And we were we were welcomed with that. We had a really nice time. Um, uh, honey did some uh, did this really cute project. It was real fun and just sort of made the day fun. And uh, so is this a new step where you continue new that same step. step? That seems like new a, step. All right, it's a brief step. Brief step. It's just a brief step. Four. We just got to get that in. And now we're going to lay in some other basic things. I'm going to use my number 18 Raphael Artini uh, round brush. It's got a hog bristle in it. And I'm going to use this one because I want to paint large areas fairly well. And I want to have some blending control. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here. I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt sienna and my yellow ochre together and I'm gonna come here and paint this area with this as its base. What we're doing is a process we're blocking in our dark colors, our shadow colors. It's maybe not our darkest potential color, but it's almost our darkest color that we'll be using in that area and that helps create those zones. Now, as I go from here through here, I'm gonna come in and add more burnt sienna and a little bit of Mars Black. And I'm going to start to blend what is the forest area to the side yellow leaves. Not far into it, you'll notice. I'm just starting to come here and work those together. If I need a little more glazing medium, I can come back into my 
yellow ochre and my burnt sienna and come here and blend back into that. See how we're doing? Yeah. So we're creating this sense of things going into our distant forest. Bringing this back here, bringing that back here. You can see that we get some depth from the underpainting, right? Where it's glowing up through. We don't end up having just white going through our dark leaf color, messing us all up. Back into my yellow ochre and my burnt sienna. You can see I'm pretty scruffly with it. I'm not too stressed about being precious. Yeah. Sometimes I'm very precious. I'm not an, an, an anti-being precious person. Sometimes I'm like, whoa, no. But just in this particular case, we don't really have to be. Oh, Ooh, that was too dark. Wrong camera out there. That's why I was like, why Come back is with it a little bit of burnt sienna there. The palette camera is not now I can switch. All right. That was our halfway mark on our canvas, right? So I've had my this here. Now I'm going to come in to more burnt sienna and kind of blend this back down. Only to about halfway through the upper right quadrant. And then I'm going to wipe off and come back into my burnt sienna and yellow ochre again. Again, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. And then as I'm coming around this edge, back into the burnt sienna and the black. This work you do now makes other work easier later and more effective in your final result. A lot of times where new students kind of throw themselves off is they just don't know the work that is leading up to their end result, right? And so they're just a little over here. It could be darker at the edges, right? So our, our darkest kind of brown would be at these edges, and then it's just going to gradually gradate in. And then I'm going to come here, and I'm going to get a little of my cad yellow and my yellow ochre, and I'm kind of going to feather that in there. And at this edge, I'll be a little irregular. I don't want to go out too far. I want to do some thoughtful tree work here, but having this nice blend at this stage is too too useful to give up. Now we know we're going to have like lots and lots of stuff here. So what we're doing is again, just building up the zones in our forest. All right, now we're going to come over to this other side. Let me just go ahead and hit this again, just because, like, I'm over here anyways, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just vary a little bit. I want to do more thoughtful work in here. So this is just, this is like notes, 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 notes. Little yellow ochre and burnt sienna kind of coming down into this area. And it's going to come down to this is actually where horizon line is. We don't really see it, but we mm. know where it is because that's where our trail vanishes for us. 
So that's the that's that's where the scene ceases to to be there for us. Darker color, Mars, black, burnt sienna for these outer edges, and then you're just gradating it through. And again, because we had the brown on there, we're not really having to work very hard to get this. If we tried to do this just raw, we'd have to do this a couple times. So we made a strategy that made things just a titch easier for us. And then, of course, I've got my earth here. So I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my Mars black. Maybe a little more burnt sienna than that. Back and forth. Horizontal. Almost like it's a stream, even though it's not. Mm. Similar thinking. That's really cool. All right. So Look, this way of light. already gives us, you can already sort of see the painting. If I did this as an abstract, it would be kind of an abstracted landscape. Um, da -da -da -da. Uh, I think he tried that. Uh, John, need, well, John needs to do ads when cinema is uh, blow drying. Oh, John is right. trying to do that. I forgot about putting the ads in. But listen, I, I, so here's what it is. And this isn't just us. This is everybody on YouTube. So okay, you, I'll explain it. Yeah. I'll try it. And you yeah, explain you, it and, yeah. and do the ad thing for them. Okay, I'm going to do so. Ba -doop, ba -doop. Okay. So here's how this works is that YouTube is now putting ads in and they kind of force us, they actually, they do force us to do them any, everywhere. But we have some control and the control is frequency. So what we do is we put it to the maximum frequency length, which I think was like 24 minutes. I don't know what it was, maybe 18 minutes. I don't remember. But we set it to the maximum one that we could and it, and it, and it kind of varies in different places what we can set it to. But we set it to the maximum and then when we go on a break, anytime she has to go dry or something like that, I hit the ad break button and it inserts ad there. And then that resets the timer uh, for how long it waits until it inserts another ad. So, did you yeah, I did. Okay, I, okay, cool. So, yeah, so we have to put the ads in, but this way you at least get them probably during the break time and hopefully there won't be some during the middle. And I'm sorry for when they pop up during the middle, there's just not much we can do. I'm sorry. So let's call this part a mini um, class or clinic within the class. Define if you have your 1264 Fabriana pad, uh, either the 110 or the 120 pound, uh, it does, I don't think it matters if it's 9 by 12, but this is like, this is my practice pad. And if you want to do this with me, um, I have this, this is what I'm using. It's in the store. If you want it, you don't have to have it. You could practice on anything you wanted. This is just what I'm using. So I'll go into, actually, I'll do this as a separate page so we don't mix, mix up those techniques is what we're doing today. Lots of ways that we can do our foliage. First one is this is a number 12 Princeton Select Round Blender. Why do we love it? We love it because it blends. We love it because it diffuses. And we love it because it makes incredible foliage. Um, it works spectacularly well for clouds, for oceans, just for everything. I can't even imagine being without it anymore. I'm going to get it mildly wet. And I am going to do our foliage in, um, I think, black so you can see it as clearly as possible. I would stipple up and down. That's a tapping up and down motion on the brush. And then I would tap up and down. And the trick with stuff like this is to create irregularity. So if I was doing like a bunch, like some foliage or low low uh, leaves or things this gives me kind of a very fine delicate leaf or foliage right in that sense plus you know we've got the blending and everything like that and this brush blends like nobody's business so that one is a very good one to do you can absolutely do that you could use a d brush this is a number eight Raphael artony d brush in and it is also hog bristles one side is shaped like a filbert when the side is rounded for blending. 
you can do a similar thing. I don't even need to get wet, but I'll get it wet on this brush. And when you get it wet, let's get it wet and I'll show you. On this brush or any hog bristle brush, you will want to pull the water out of the brush before beginning to work with it because all natural hair and fibers hold a lot more water than synthetic, um, which is great when you're working in a high need water media like watercolor and not great on acrylic when you don't want it. This is also a fantastic, look at this, terrific. Maybe I should make a short of all the different brushes I use. I'm going to make a short later, but this, the, you guys have this, this way, because this is our big autumn landscape, so I want us to nail it, and I love that. See how nice and bushy that looks? That is fan. One more time. I just got a nice, I just got a really nice frame I can on do it. it again. One more right below it. Just so that I will it do it sense. right below it. Let's look at how nice and bushy it is. Again, if you have these brushes at home, practice with me. So I've just, I'm not using anything but water. I'm just doing this, stippling up and down. And what's nice about this is because of the shape of the brush and it having curved angles, it lets you get some interesting, delicate, big and small stipples, if you can see. Yeah. So I can go small with pressure and the stipples can be bigger and heavier with more pressure and lighter. Look at how that just even there makes. You just got to stipple it. it. It is a stippling stroke. So just that is one. Why are we doing this? Because the last few times I used a brush, maybe I used one brush for the whole thing. Everybody was like, oh, I have to buy this brush. And I'm like, no, you know, a lot of brushes do these techniques. And they were like, you're lying. And I'm like, I should have saved the comment and like made a response video. But uh, I, I got to get more minded like that. This is the Deer, Deerfoot Stippler. This is a 3 8 Deerfoot Stippler by Princeton, Princeton Select. They have these in several lines. The Select is their economy line from the Velvet Touch. That's a good tip if you're if the Filbert Grain you're at ten dollars because I think the Filbert Grain is right around the ten dollar price point and a thing and the and the Selects are about half. Um, and and they're both good brushes, so oh, that's why I have both in there so you can budget out what your life is. All right, so this is the Select. And this is the Deerfoot Stippler and the Deerfoot Stippler. And I mean, I did a whole video on this. We even talked about that. This is, this is bushes. Now this, you'll notice I roll the brush as I work too. Oh, let me get a little more zoomy. So when I'm working with the Deerfoot Stippler, I'm rolling that brush. I'm not, I'm not playing around. I'm rolling that brush. By the way, we'll timestamp this. My, the moderators yep. are amazing. They collect timestamps. They're absolutely going to collect the timestamp for the brush demo. So you guys can find it again. Cause you'll be later. You'll yep. be like, this is just. We stippled on step five. Okay. Just so you know. I That's totally fine. You can stipple whatever step it is. This, it's totally this, fine. This was our secret stippling step five. Secret step. Uh, but usually Donna pulls out an extra timestamp to say when a technique is taught. Oh. I don't I don't know. That's what Donna does. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to come here and I'm going to get this brush wet. Now we're going to talk about this brush a little bit. This is the this is a three quarter inch Princeton Select. I also have one inch of these. This is an oval mop. It is synthetic. The synthetic ones in the Princeton line. And notice the difference between even the color on these two brushes. Like this one's a little more golden and this one's more little red. As they manufacture and they do stuff, there's little changes. But basically, it's always this. A reddish brown to a dark tip. The black and the white one are the wrong one. The ones that when you get them wet, they smell like hair. Wrong one. You want the synthetic one. So I'm going to take the, the slightly smaller one, I think. And I'm going to get it wet. I'm going to dry it off. These brushes are great for blending as well. Clouds, all kinds of incredible techniques, varnishing. I love them so much. And I come through and I kind of fluff my brush. See, I'm fluffing my brush. And I'm going to uh, sort of tap that up and down. Have you gone through your brush bucket yet, my friends, and tapped all your brushes? I don't think you have. I think many of you are sitting at home going, is that something I should have done? Hmm. And then, no, because I forgot to tell you. So now I'm telling you. So you're totally perfect. <laughs> Sorry, perfect. <so> weird. <laughs> so um, that was a horse. I don't know why. Oval mop in any size. I have a ton of these. I love them so much. And then, of course a round hog brush. We're going to get it wet. I'm going to tap it up and down. I like these because, look, I can do little teeny tiny delicate work. Look how delicate it can be. So when I use brushes that make patterns like this, I don't have to take a teeny tiny brush. There's an oil artist out there that does, takes a teeny tiny brush. 
and does every leaf and it's impressive it looks beautiful god the end result is good but mm -hmm. i would again have spicy brain i don't know at what point the leaves and i would become mortal enemies but it would happen <laughs> just that would be mad at them for them being too many because if i had to take a teeny tiny brush and go leaf leaf change color leaf leaf i i just mm. so i gotta find that balance between ultra realism and sanity Notice that when I let it dry brush, look at this diffused leaf texture. Can we zoom in on that? Diffused sure leaf texture, sir. Diffuse. See how that's diffused? So when I have paint on it fresh, you get some pretty defined little leaves. But then when, as it diffuses, look how soft and out of focus they are. I was worried it was, I was out of focus. I had to refocus to focus. Right. And you want that. You need to out of focus stuff in your painting. That's how you make it look like it's far away and out of focus is you need to know what tools. Um, it, uh, Amy over at says, Cinnamon, my dog just twisted her head so far. I thought it was going to fall <laughs> off during your laugh. <laughs> great puppy. You're a very good doggies. Thank you. Okay, I'm fine. Right now I have to put all my brushes back. So, and then the last one I can think of to even try and do is you can try and take like any brush. I'm going to try to find a brush that will work. I think I put it down here. So I had that first, this is my first one, right? So it's damp. If I kind of, if I kind of try to break up the, the filaments a little bit, I can... Oh boy, but I work much harder. No, look how much, how, how much harder I'm working to get the effect. Mm. I can though get there from the corner of a brush. It's not the same as having to do individual leaves, right? But it's close and I have to work mostly the corner and it's a whole thing for me. But that is all the brushes. <laughs> you could do it, right? You've got one of those in your brush buckets. You've got this. You watch this again. You practice it on a scratch pad of paper. You're going to be great. Now, now that we know what we're doing, I'm afraid we're going to have to cook. All right. No, I'm teasing. But that's a, I think we'll, we'll call um, that a step. All right. That seems like a good place to step. Putting my brushes back. Uh, <laughs> focus and then focus it's like wax on wax off it is a little bit I'm making sure I have an, some of my brushes sometimes roll away under my thing so now generally in a landscape like this I tend to be inclined because of the way objects layer in other words one is in front of the other in 3d space tend to like to paint the furthest back surfaces and come forward note it's a great strategy. Fantastic for beginners. I have set so many of you up for success doing this. But you will notice when you're out in the world, some artists just start painting at one corner and just go across. Mm -hmm. It's just a strategy. It's a, it is a more advanced strategy. <laughs> but it is a strategy. And so when you see me do it this way, not the only way to do it. Not the only way at all. Okay. And I definitely will be doing vision enhancers today so I can really see what's going on. And we are going to begin our center line, right? So this is the center of our forest that we're doing. I think I really like that D brush. So I'm going to see if the D brush, this was a number eight Raphael D brush. You can use any brush that gives you any of those demonstrated leaf, t uh, uh, leaf techniques. So that just pick the one that you've got in your bucket. And then we're going to come through here. Now down here, it is our lightest. So I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow smidge oh gosh just a smidge i want the mildest green cast to it i almost used our lemon yellow and then i was like ah, i don't want him to have to go buy a whole new thing of paint so i'm gonna get here man look how light that is and i'm gonna begin kind of working this up this is just our most light in the distant kind of color and because we're going to be weaving these textures in and out with each other Now, as I go up, I might get into a little yellow and my yellow ochre. Pull off that little. Now, there's some pretty solid 
Solid yellow through here, right? So now we have that sort of going on there. You can pull a little of this sort of yellow ochre kind of color back a little bit. You're going to breathe. And how we're going to get through this is we are going to take steps in little increments. Mm -hmm. And we're going to layer and we're going to blend and it is going to be amazing. I can come back in. See, adding a little bit of white and it's adding a little layering of dimensionality there. I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow and blue again. I mean, my white and blue. See? I'm going to say some things, and you're going to be like, what? But I'm the one that's going to pull the brushes out, show you how to use all of them so you can for sure succeed. <laughs> so I feel like it's a fair trade-off. A little bit of weirdness for epic art education. I'll bring this down here into this space. That's even a little more sky-colored, isn't it? Now up at my top here is definitely a little bit of, okay, I'm going to come right into that with my cad yellow in there. I'm kind of mid-toning it. You'll notice that I add a little white in. Sky peeking through the leaves is very important. Mm-hmm. My mom was in a class once. She came to a class to help it make, and she was doing this sort of cool stuff. And the teacher, who I did not really necessarily love their particular style of landscape painting, said something really wonderful, which was you need to leave room for the birds to fly through the trees. <laughs> and I thought that was a great way to remind people that these things we're painting, especially when we're painting the natural world, these are living, breathing spaces. This, This is... This is the home of an interconnected system of flora and fauna. And when you're painting, if you want to have that extra life in your painting, it does help to think about maybe the dozens of the forest that are living here, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to get by, trying to eke out a little living in their, in their forest. You can see that we're starting to get that irregular shapes through those spaces aren't they wonderful it's not too bad now oh, another uh, little yellow ochre and um cad yellow and a, a smidge i think i'm gonna smidge <gasps> you know here's a power move if you haven't done this What's purple that? graying your yellow with purple is a power move Gotta oh, have why is that? Like, because it's a contrasting color to the yellow and it allows you to deepen the value or shade the paint um, and also at the same time desaturate it, make it less vibrant and less overwhelming to the viewer. I'm just tapping this up and down here. I'm not making TV snow. TV snow is a uniform dispersion of different white, black, gray, all those little... Pfft, so the trick here is to make sure that you have areas of depth, how dark it is, and areas of light. But you can see, as busy as it is, we're still finding a way through painting it, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I'm going to come here. There's a bit of a, a forward angle bush. I'm going to put it back because I think the layering will be worth it. So we're okay. This generally goes to about through here. So again, yellow ochre, red yellow, smidge of dioxazine purple.
And we're hit this other side too. We're doing great. Mm -hmm. Not as deep. It's only a little bit with this because we're going to be getting into the reds and browns pretty fast with it. So we're okay. And I think that's enough to have that laid out. Let's dry it and come back and we will do another step. Okay, so let's make sure we got to try to do the ad now. So we go, okay, so hopefully that will give us a little tie break before you guys, you won't be like, ad, ad. Hopefully that just got us before we needed another ad. But, you know, we're trying to play the YouTube game so we don't get the ads where we don't want them. So sorry that I'm inserting them i don't i don't i don't like it it makes me feel dirty to push the add button okay but i'll push the step button push the step button That's my a friend good button to push push the step button all righty now so now i'm going to come through here and i'm going to start working this space coming forward so let's grab our number eight catalyst Princeton Bright again. This is a bright brush and we're going to just do some dirt painting. Get a little bit of your titanium white into your brown and black mix. And we're going to start painting dirt. Dirt's very comfortable. Co colorful, by the way, if you didn't know. Super colorful. I grab a little bit of my yellow ochre into this mix over here and you see it kind of adds that little yellow hint we're seeing there and we're going to just back and forth see these little jaggedy strokes let's look at that again before we even let's look at the stroke again just to be sure right just to know what we're doing i might just put this to the side so i'm not reaching for it every time Fabriano, 1264. We like them. <laughs> it wasn't sponsored, but... <laughs> this is what it's doing on my surface. It is dry brushing. See how here you can see the dry brush? Some of the, the strokes will be heavier, and then they get lighter. I'm making them a regular, and I'm following light down the path. See how that's done? Yeah. That's nice. what we're doing. I hope that helped. I'm going to put that right there. Why am I new? reaching for stuff when I need, know I need it? All right. <laughs> no worries, John. We all know you're an awesome good guy. John is an awesome good guy. Well, thank you. It's a true story. Maybe a little more yellow ochre in it. Now, yellow ochre and yellow oxide are very interchangeable colors. Just trying to make sure that I've got good coverage. There we go. I just was thin on acrylic paint, and so it was coming up more of a wash than a paint. Dry brushing is great, but you do want it to cover the canvas. Then I might blend into my yellow here. Bringing it down the path, kind of layering over. I'm not painting it out. You'll notice that that just sort of creates a value where you sort of, you can see how this zone and that zone are related, right? I added a little white and just making sure that there's a nice gradation where those things carry through. Bring it down into here. I don't mind. I'm good. A little bit of my cad yellow, cad red, more burnt sienna. And weave it in through here. We're weaving it in. Weave, 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 weave. A little more cad red over to my burnt sienna. And maybe back here, if you'll notice, there's a bit of a kind of redder area back on the path. Some coming in, so that's what we're getting to here. Just a little redder. 
and we can keep playing with that. Let's call that a step. Now, what I'm planning to do, I'm going to do here and here, is I think, hmm, that was super fun, but I really liked this here. So I think I'm going to, that was my D, and I think I'm going to stay in my D. I'm not hallucinating there, right? <laughs> well, no, in a minute. So let's see, I've got yellow ochre. Let's look at what this will look like as we layer it. So I have a little yellow ochre. Kind of burnt sienna base. Let me dry that. And then I'm going to demo all the layers. And then you guys are going to follow along with me. Knowing what they are. I feel like it was darker than that. And that's probably because it was brown first. So can you see, do you see the difference here of the result? If I'd left my canvas white, this is where it'd be. Yeah. So that's why it matters. I see. Now I gotta get my canvas dark enough to match up a little bit. Cause dang, <laughs> right? Okay. Now let's, um, dry it and I'll show you how we're going to get through and we're going to make sure we like our technique before we go through and then we're going to power through like we are mm. power through I guess step nine will be a power step power so yeah if uh, gouache paint is really cool it's similar to acrylic has some similarities some differences it's kind of like um, the middle ground between watercolor and acrylic what gouache Gouache, yes. It's kind of like it, it has a foot in each category. <laughs> it does have a foot in the door, so does a temp tempera. Yeah, tempera. All right, so now we need to go from our darkest yellows up into our lightest, and we also need to have interdispersed brown. And the first one I want to get is to figure out how I want to go through my yellow. I'm going to take my little yellow here, and maybe I'm going to grab some burnt sienna, interestingly enough, over into this yellow. Just trying to find the value of it that I want to hit. That's pretty good. So, and I'm not going to do a huge amount. This is what I... I think... I like that, but I may go to my... Let's try our round... Deer foot here. Yeah, I think that's more what I want. So that's giving me more of that. And I'm pressing about that hard. See that press? So it's giving me this kind of kind of thing. And then as I'm going to come through, I'm going to go into maybe a little more yellow. Maybe a little more yellow. Some, some burns in it, though, still. And come in here and a lighter value of it. So we're seeing the layering, and if I come in and get some just yellow and maybe a, a little zinc. So you want to strategize and see how does it work. And then when you have something that does what you're looking for, then you can execute it on that surface. And the other thing we can do, remember, is we can come into our... That's too much purple on that brush, but to make some grayed leaves so we can gray it with the dioxazine. And then we will be coming through with like a little brown. But in spaces, right?
we're gonna I'm gonna demo this all again, but I just want you to really be able to see what we had going on. So before we get there, you can do it. Mm -hmm. So we'll call that a step, and then we'll go ahead and that do seems this. That good. So I'll let you do that on on when I'm doing the thing where it's like, oh, I'm gonna do a step here of go. technique demo. Are we liking the technique that demo? Yes, I think people are very much liking it. come through here and I'm going to take a little of my yellow definitely gonna get some burnt sienna involved and you can get blending meme because sometimes the the glazing medium will even help it offload well and the point is, is I'm trying to make I'm not just doing anything and trying to make sure that this big area, right? So how you paint the details without paying the details is you a lot of generalization and value, and then you come through and you put specific details in. So this is gonna be really fun because this is one of those paintings where that skill is everything. The yellow kind of gets a little darker back here. Just a lot of this, man. So since we have to do, oh, I just grabbed some black, which I didn't want to grab, but I don't mind. Grab a little bit of my yellow and my burnt sienna. While we're doing this, maybe John can ask me some questions because we're going to be doing it for a minute. Could be, you're going to be stippling for a minute? For a minute. There's no, the, I thought you said, this is power stippling. It is long stippling. It's a, st it's a, it's a path of stippling. There is, it, this is not the only way to get into this. And we're not relying entirely on stippling. We're not going to have a painting of stippling. This uh -oh. isn't like an eight minute piano thing. Uh -huh. This is, we're going to get in there and do the leaves, but we have to get a basis, an architecture to hang our hats on, so to speak. The, and we're um, going to save the details for the last few values of color. So this is just the under stipple. This is the under stipple. The under stipple mm -hmm. who will come and rain fury upon you. No. Uh, no. You, you you yes yes agree yeah you could use uh, any of your brushes to step with especially the Deerfoot if you had one yes and earlier and it's time will be time stamped we did a demo with a series of brushes now a big stippler will go faster than a small stippler yes but a small but it stippler, might make too big of stipples the so then maybe. what do you do you, you gotta you gotta be stipple a, a, a appropriate. Or at least know if you're using a little stipple, you're going to be stippling in a long time. But if you stipple with something too big, you might get too bulky stipples. Mm -hmm. So you got to find the middle stipple. Mm. Work. It's you know what in like it's crazy how quickly it starts to get there. It does. It just. So it starts to go. Where did my water spray bottle go? I had a water bottle. Is that with... what you foot dropped earlier? Huh? Actually, that's what you dropped. Do, did I drop one? I don't know. No, I had... There's my white paint and some scissors. Oh, you dropped that. I didn't need it. I don't know where that water bottle went. I'll go find you one. I swear. It's like... <laughs> the controller... The controller is so... It's never... It's It's just... Okay. Like, I am the one who for sure... Huh? Yeah, reheat my coffee cup. That's clear. Honestly, coffee helps me focus and stick, keep my stuff together. So it's very good for me. <laughs> Pull this through here. I will specifically come through on the darker areas, I think, and deepen them, but I'll put this down under.
just want to be calm and bring this around. <laughs> Jane Garrett likes my top. Looks like danger mushrooms. It is! It is danger mushrooms. Well, not if you're a deer. If you're a deer, it's party mushrooms. But we poisoned from those, so that's terrible. Bringing that forward. Bringing that forward. Okay. We got that going there. Maybe a little more yellow. Might even get smidge. I am going to nibble a cracker and I'm going to mute myself. I'm here. I'm just nibbling a cracker. And you don't, I don't do some weird listen to me eat ASMR channel. And so that's why I'm going to do that. But I am here. Mm. I might need a juice or an Arizona tea or something, too. I muted myself, but then I unmuted myself. <laughs> Sorry to be doing that all in your ear. If your paint's drying out on you too quickly, you can use glazing medium in place of water, and it does work really well. This is the camouflage that hides the spaces between the detailed brush strokes. You're so funny, John. You're like, it's green. It'll look like there's a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Just coming through here and making sure we've got that, you know, covered. When you've got a project like this where it's got a long stipple, you know, a trick, this is a weird trick, but you can put the closed captions on and the sound off and then you can just see uh, when I'm talking and you don't have to worry about what I'm saying. Then you can even be in quieter space if you wanted. See, I can kind of. That's not looking terrible at all. Got some really nice stuff going. Let's call that step and let's do another step. We're kind of doing the same stuff. So don't feel weird about it. Now I'm going to take, interestingly enough, I'm going to take a little of my all-terrain blue and my cad yellow and I'm going to make a green here. It is a green gold when you use cad yellow and all-terrain blue. That is what it's supposed to be. It will feel bright on this canvas. It isn't. But it may even at some point feel bright. Just putting this at this edge here. Not, I don't want bright pops of yellow.
It's always nice to hint a little bit of green in an autumn painting because they're complementary colors. Put more blue in it, it's a darker green. Tap that up and down. Still using the blender, the round blender. Could have used any of those brushes I demoed. I'm just still using this one. And John will be like, it's is like, is this one of those paintings where you use one brush? <laughs> I'm like, I never just mean to use one brush. I just sometimes do use one brush. It happens. I like how they how this, how this is just kind of developing into focus. Yeah. I'm going to add, this one may look a little bit more like a picture developing. It'll be like, yeah. I'm not sure. And then it'll be like, I'm a little more sure. And then I'm a little more sure. This is one you may need to walk away from and look at for a while. And if I want to, I can get a little of the... Maybe even the brown into my green. If I take a little phthalo uh, ultramarine blue and a little cad yellow over here and I add burnt sienna to it, I should be able to get into a very nice forest green that's got kind of a green gold cast to it, see? More army based, less saturated. I'm kind of working just some Well, that's looking pretty darn good. All right, put, I'm going to start coming up into my background a little bit. In my background, I'm going to take a little of my cad red into my burnt sienna. And believe it or not, get some Mars black in there. So it's pretty deep. It's pretty intense. But I want it to be thoroughly mixed. <laughs> You can even do red and black. Does a pretty good job too. And come through here. It's quite dark. Little darkness coming out into our little green cast. Pack into my cad red a little bit. Maybe get a little of my cad yellow into it. Just through here. Now we're going to, we don't even need to dry anything. We're going to come back and do the next step. I'm going to get some, some dry. We're going to, don't even need to dry. I'm going to get a little dry. glazing medium on my brush and I'm going to come back into. But you do want another step. I do want another step. Okay. I'm going to come back into my path color. Just to make sure. And I'm going to start to blend <coughs> the lighter path color over with the glazing medium. I'll get into my brown and black. It doesn't, and there's glazing medium, so it doesn't take away. A little zinc. Zinc. 
See how we were able to smooth the path? Little Mars black, a little burnt sienna, a little titanium white. I don't mind if I get a little yellow ochre into that. Wonderful path color. Glazing medium. And I am using it as a glaze. And you can see now that all that work I did is still showing through, but it's just doing what this path did. It's compacting. Really need to dry that at this stage. I'm going to put this round brush to the side though. And I'm going to switch to a different kind of round. This is a number six Raphael sepia. Grab a little bit of my Mars black and my burnt sienna. Come over this side and I'm going to make little individual considered Duvers. Just in these types of little shapes. Okay, guys? That's what we're doing. Little depths. Come into the hair and get a little bit more of my black and brown glazing medium on the round brush. Glazy medium. A little bit of the cad red and the burnt sienna. It, it, it's very shiny. And then it the won't be shiny. Well, as soon as well, it's no, no, dry. It's, it's great from the overhead, but from the side, it's shiny. It's shiny. shiny. So I'm putting those shadows across the path. And I'm going to take a little bit of this. Let's dry everything. Okay. We can dry. reach our hair dryer. Right, we can reach our hair dryer. Right. And we will add insert here. Okay, so hopefully... Uh, that will give people an ad at that point. And then maybe, I don't know, we're going to try it. It's the buttons that I have to play with that here. But man, it's so nice to see everybody here. And, you know, Madonna, we absolutely love you participating with us here. We could not be here without you. Because, like, you guys are everything for us. So, thank you. Oh, and did you get your did you get your tea? I did. Okay. That what I didn't do was sip my coffee. I think I want to lighten the path up overall. Is this the twelfth step? Yeah. All right. We have stepped away. <clears throat> We're doing great, guys. All right. I want to lighten this up a bit, so I'm going to take a little of my I think my cad red, my cad yellow, and my Yellow oxide, interestingly enough. Yeah. And then let's bring that over into the path color. Let's add a little more white to it. Back and forth again, just blending over. There's glazy medium. We're just being. I think I'm gonna go over those a little bit too. I think they'll show better. So that's something of the dance, but I never stress over it. And the reason I don't is really because 
if I hang in, if I persevere, if I don't, you know, lose my temper, I will always find my way through. As will you. Back to my round brush. There we go. Just dabbing it through. Wow, that's such a nice path. Is that brush stiffer? Nope. No. This is the number six Raphael Sepia. It's not super stiff. It's not super soft either, though. Some some of these brushes tend to be super soft, and that is not what it is. I'm going to grab a little bit of a very, very light color here for my leaves. Put a few over the dark. I don't want to erase them. I just want to dimensionalize them a little bit. A little bit of red. Yellow. More yellow. So the trick to this is always to cluster together and to randomize. Randomize. Friends, randomize. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and just a smidge of the green I made from earlier, which was the ultramarine blue and the uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna into the cad yellow. Now, we're going to do the very long and arduous work of the details. The See how these are looking like little detail leaves? They really are. As we're coming out. But because we created that randomized background, and as we go back, we don't have to be as detailed. Sometimes I think it is also nice to like randomize the positioning of the leaves. Oh my goodness. The heater is really doing a good job. Is that good? Mm hmm okay. Very good. Very, 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 very good. Very good. I'm so sorry about texting that wrong time yesterday and then finding out I had to go. I love how kids don't, like, tell you that there's, like, a big school fair or... <laughs> Until the very last moment? The last, last possible, possible moment, mm -hmm. right? And come into this yellow here. Man, I wish I had my mister. I might have you turn off the camera so I can go look for it. Uh, I'll look around for it. Hold on a second. I just I don't have anything to do. Hold on. I don't know where I have a backup one, and I don't know if it got put over here. So that fabulous art <laughs> I shared with you today, Honey's uh, first short for the channel. Uh, means that honey was working at my station and there, things have been moved. <laughs> do I think she, that they are trying to psych me out? No, I do not. <laughs> the artwork was enough to do that. I was like, it was like, oh, let's have a, let's have, let's draw off. And I'm like, oh, thank you. I would not have found that or seen it or anything. So what John's about to hand me is a Mr. Bottle with water in it, just water. 
and I'm going to mist my paint so that it doesn't. I have a wet palette, but I also mist so that it doesn't dry. Notice this stroke. Um, let me show them this stroke because I think it's important to the eventual look. So there's a couple strokes I've got going here. I've got the daubs that I showed you, but then I've also got this. See how I'm making these random patterns? That's a pattern. Pattern, no pattern. You want to zoom in on it for him? I think all techniques should be zoomed. Really see. See how this creates a pattern, but non-pattern. Very quickly. Painting the details without the details. I think we should just let Honey go get Honey's nails done. <laughs> I don't know. Three, three. No, maybe it was four. Possibly. We'll see. Okay. When I go back, as I go back, this will all get um, smaller. I'm going to go ahead and mix here my yellow ochre into that green and yellow mix. But as we go back, you want it to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Same brush stroke style, though. Got lots of one hoots coming up, guys. So if you're feeling like, wow, this is a lot, <laughs> I'm going to get into my yellow and my green a little bit. But if you are, if you're feeling like, wow, I'm a little overwhelmed, what's going on, right? One hoots are coming. Look at that go. At some point, it can start to become fun. I rated it at three hoop. It's not it's not really that challenging. It's just that there's just a lot of layers. It's just really what it is. You gotta go back, uh kinda hit the far side. Back with your yellow again, which was in your ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Ultramarine blue is a fantastic landscape color. It's been used forever. When I hear modern artists being like, you can't make green with ultramarine blue, I'm like, then you were never able to make green. <laughs> you didn't understand how green happens. Because you can make green with yellow and black. So, you know, the thing is, is that sometimes colors are hard, not because they're hard, but because we're trying to create, you know, maybe a, a look or a feel to something. I'm going to bring some of these back and you can see I'm making them smaller. And we're just not getting the result we want. And so we attribute it to being the material when really it's just an understanding break of what happens with ultramarine when uh, you're mixing it and what kind of green you'll get and when you want ultramarine green. Because sometimes you do. Because nature doesn't necessarily give you the greens that you get with thalo as often as it gives you the greens that you get with blacks and ultramarines and cerulean. You can see smaller brush strokes as I go back. I don't think there's supposed to be an earlier time. So if there is, I will have uh, missed it. I only did 12 for the uh, 13 days of Halloween. Um, because I had, I had those big ones on there. They were like really tough, weren't they? Just dabbing this, dabbing this, dabbing this, dabbing this. I'm starting to feel like what I could do was that thing I do there where I just demonstrate the technique and then we go, and then demonstrate the technique and we go, and then a five hour painting could be like 30 minutes for you, not for me. I would still be here for all that time. I like to take time to put the color sometimes back into the forest a little bit when I know I'm going to be back there a lot. Just 
with some yellow ochre sometimes. It's going to come through with some yellow ochre. We have so many yellows here, and I didn't even pull in Titan It Yellow or Lemon Yellow, Ansa, or any of it. Feel like I need some more of the path color coming back. Sometimes I can put that back with leaves, leaf brush strokes. It's really weird, but I can do that, which I like a lot. Oh, I'm having fun with this. It's a fun day. Any questions? Just they were asking if they. Uh, well, <laughs> Madonna asks, uh, were you born talented or did you take classes? I took classes. How many classes? What kind of classes? Every kind of class. And I still take classes. I will never stop taking classes. I will never stop learning. One, did you ever... I'm lucky enough to not be the best artist in the world. I pity that artist. Did you ever take a basket weaving class? I have taken a basket weaving class. Very few people know who haven't taken a basket weaving class that almost all basket weaving classes take place underwater. <laughs> so funny. That was a real course, by the way. Underwater basket weaving. I it know. was a real course. Because you weave a basket underwater. Because the water makes it pliable. No, it was actually that. philosophy course. But it's fine. <laughs> um, he's making fun of <laughs> Just... <sighs> Just making these right, regular, regular Do -do -do. things. Come through here. Just, you know, you just want to pay attention to the details and, and quiet your mind and ask yourself, what is there? What do I see? What do I see? I don't believe most artists are bored. I'm just kind of wiggling. I am. John, are you ready to do a close-up? Um. So on the edge, this is this is what I'm doing. I'm using a bit of the belly and the toe of the brush to get this sort of textured out. And you wouldn't necessarily see that, but it's blending here in a diffused way because of the layers I've already put down. Oh. So sometimes when you're painting along, it looks like things have remained the same, but they have it. And I can style, like, finally start putting a little of this yellow through the darker uh, areas that I put in. Smaller strokes when you're further away, my friend. Smaller strokes. And we know we're going to come back through with this rust color, but we're just building up our values. And out a little further, I'm starting to, you know, accentuate maybe some of the bend in the path. quiet lesson this time mm, isn't it and yeah. i think it's just because it's a it th when you have lessons that are repeated brush strokes it's going to be quiet it's true it's true just just throw in some music and i'm going to rinse out rinsey rinse 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 out now i'm going to take a lot of my yellow and put it into my yellow green now we'll go ahead and get a little zinc involved. So we're putting the brighter leaves. These are our more focal leaves. Really cool. Oh, thank you, Ramona. You thank are you amazing. So much. Huh? 
Ramona is amazing. Ramona, thank you. You're amazing. Thank you very much. Look, guys, man, I cannot tell you how weird it is out here. Um, I so appreciate all the help. I, I mean, it, I appreciate the help even when it's just you guys like, all right, I'm putting up with the ad. You know. Because Google, YouTube has like been like, all right, we're coming for pop, we're coming for ads, and they're blocking pop ups, and they're taking down accounts, and I'm hearing about people getting notices from them. So, you know, I'm just gonna be like, all right, YouTube, you want those ads so bad? You know those ads so bad. Just got a little more green mixed in there. And that's just with the zinc. Just going over it again. <laughs> Look at this guy. I'm doing this because we did a multicolored landscape. And you guys did great on that. But it's real hard for you to do those green on greens. Which is why we did the green on green radiant light one. Mm -hmm. This this time and this is why we're doing the yellow and orange one and why i let y'all vote on this one normally i'd be like nope not this one nope nope <laughs> but you know the thing is is that this is 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 something you're not gonna see out there taught like a ton just because it's so time consuming yeah and there's 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 a thing you got to know if there's enough contrast in a painting light and dark and you shrink it down small it looks like it's really good um it's it's something i have to think about all the time on uh, our channel like being careful to not allow contrast to misrepresent a painting mm -hmm. because it will This is really cool. Just bring it here. So when you're looking at something and it's in a thumbnail and it has high contrast and then you go to paint it and you don't get that result that you saw in the thumbnail, that isn't you. At all. But it does teach a very important lesson, which I'm always saying, which is value is what makes a painting. You can have a terrible painting and if the value is right, it will look great. Yeah. In a picture, small, not in person. So, you know, that's the thing to keep in mind, too, is expectations. We have these expectations sometimes. I think that's too much of that light there, so I'll have to take that back out later. I really think I want it just more in an angle across here. Got to talking, got to monologuing, my friends. That's okay. Monologuing is a lot of fun. You're not wrong. And then there's kind of like a little angle here, sort of comes up. I mean, we're going to get there. It's just going to be a little bit of a journey. And that's okay. That's what you came for, right? Take a dark journey. I'm going to grab a little more uh, yellow ochre and put it into this mix over here and kind of come over to the side and make sure I've got a nice even distribution. All right. I think we're not done with the leaves. This is just a nice architecture to know what we've got. We're going to dry everything and continue to come back in and do more. Do do more, we my friend. Because we do, do more. Okay. And add time for all the people who are adding. And for those who are not adding, you will not add here. It will not be an ad. You will just sit here and let us watch the paint dry. 
drying the paint. Not with heat, though, because drying with heat would be bad. And if you don't know why, there's about a thousand, and I mean that, a thousand videos or more, maybe 2,000 videos, where I just droll on endlessly about drying your paint without heat. Speaking of drolling on endlessly, can you make my coffee? Yeah, yeah, sure. So that the funny one that, that I got need. was somebody had written me this thing. Uh, you know how the everything a beginner needs to know uh, or how, how to start acrylic painting? I think it's the short 20-minute one, not the course. And the short 20 minute one was to go with a kit and it just really teaches everything you need to know as a beginner when you're starting painting. Like it really covers a lot of stuff, like right down to how to wash your brushes in a short amount of time. And I got this fabulous comment saying, you're amazing. You're fantastic. I just subscribed. You just don't drone on and chat too much. And you're not talking about nonsensical things. And I just really love you as an art teacher. And I was like, I literally made the time to be like, thanks. Ah, uh, just before you watch anything else, there's something you should know about me. Um, not as quiet as you think. <laughs> that was like super funny. Uh, all right. What do I do? Let me look at, uh, this is an 11 by 14. Oh, that's right. Jennifer B says texture is the, uh, yeah. So the texture is this synthetic and the artony is this one. So hog bristle synthetic. All right, I gotta get back into my painting. Now we are gonna come through and I need to do some little in the center work here to put some stuff in. So let's get our round brush. I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna put some more yellow out because I've gone through more yellow than I've gone through practically all month. It's just a wild day, isn't it? Sorry about the long lesson, babe. Come here with a little bit of Mars, I mean, uh, black and brown. I'm going to make a fairly dark, distant little dude. Roll the brush. Just make sure I'm going to get a good line off of the brush is what I'm looking for. Sometimes I will use a uh, glazing liquid to get a better line. It does help improve the flow of paint, not just for blending, but for just general painting. Now I can be exact to what I have or I can be general to what I have and a lot of times I will tend to be general to what is going on in the painting and that is because um, I think that the photographers have already nailed photography. That's not what I'm trying to do. These are just short little distant lines in the distant distant back of trees that are far away. They make little fine lines. Now I'm going to come through here. Fine as I can make some lines across the center, I'm going to do that. Now, here's the thing about that. We're going to paint out a lot of them. They are going to not show as well as they could. And that is what they're supposed to do. Right, these are the lines in the foliage that are peeking through. Roll the brush and switch, get right back on that toe. See how we're just creating lots and lots of little tree branches that we're about to lose track of entirely. <laughs> it's just fantastic. I think I will use my round uh, blender again for this. 
And now I'm getting into some interesting stuff here. I'm getting into some oranges. I'm getting into some uh, darker, darker yellow. So I'm going to take this little cad uh, yellow and cad red here. Now let's grab a little bit of our burnt sienna, our Mars black. Let's come here and begin to plant some of the trees. that might be coming into our center here. So it's cad red, cad yellow. Just in the center there where, you know, it's sort of definitely coming together. Cad yellow, cad red, little burnt sienna, and a titch of the Mars black in there. It's going to give us our distant leaf color. Right here, maybe a little bit more burnt sienna and Mars black into it, but still quite red. Just working in my reds. Now I piece together like the shapes in the foliage. So I don't look at individual leaves. I look at the collection of leaves that make up a branch. The values that exist in that branch. And the colors that I want to include to tell that story. That is... A more brown here. Just a little burnt sienna in here. So it's not a solid anything. It's a pretty considered little journey. Now I'm going to get a lot more burnt sienna on here. It's okay if some Mars black gets in it. You're okay, John? Yeah, I'm just fine. If we need to make it a two-parter, you let me know. Mm, I don't think so. Okay. It seems like you're cruising right along. And when you have to go, um, I, I'm okay. Or, or maybe Honey will come in co-host I'm not sure Tapping it up and down. We just got it so easy, guys. We're so good. Breathe in. <sighs> you get through this, you will be better at painting. Mm. 
Whoa, there's an alarm. Boop, boop. Turn that one off. I just grabbed some black and I'm working that shadow in there. You can see that. Giving it some irregular shapes. Shadow is as important as highlight. When we're trying to tell that story. So important of a story. Look at that. Let me just blend that out. We just go, go, go. And it's just so fantastic. I love it. I love it. When it starts to come in, it really starts to come in. Yeah. It is one of those things. Okay. Let me take a little bit of red into this, but then a lot of yellow into it. A little bit of zinc there. Just try to lighten it up with a little bit of zinc. You know how this lighter kind of makes it look like it's got sunlight around it? Mm -hmm. Really, that's one of my favorite things is when we make something look like it has sunlight around it. I can come in and push that there and push that there and it'll give little sunlight lips to, you know, everything here. Grab some more cad yellow and I'm just sort of bringing this over. It pushes some of those branches back. Do you notice when we go over it, it makes them feel more distant? Yeah. It's because they're less saturated. A little brown. Maybe into the cad red, cad yellow space here. Need to. Mm, let's call that. I want to dry everything just so I have a good handle on it. Give it a good it. dry. Let me give it a good dry so I have a handle All on right. it. Woo! Can I got to dry these steps. This is just a stipply step. This is like there's some there's just lots of little stipply steps to get us through this one today. Little step 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 step. All right. All righty, righty, hello. Step, yeah, we're going to go next step, and we're going to get into, um, I, I'm going to use, okay, I'm going to be super lazy. I'm going to use a big giant deer foot stippler, but the deer foot stippler, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is me going, I want to, I have to go do my nails. Um, so this is a 20. It is bigger than the eight by about this much. Um, so it will give me larger pattern areas, and, and what I'll have to be careful of is not making, well, snow. It's always snow, my friends. It's yeah. always snow. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of my brown, red, cad yellow. And give myself the foliage I need to weave my trees in. There has to be a certain amount of background leaves that we're kind of catching or seeing that we're weaving our, I'm making sure my stipple goes around the back edge of it. So mm. in framing, it doesn't look ridiculous. <laughs> now I may bring this down here, even though I'm going to come back and make my same leaf thing. See how we're doing? Mm -hmm. Come into the black a little bit. Turn the brush a little bit. See how if I turn the brush, it creates little little unexpected moments? You want those. Not every one of them, but you do want them.
like to turn the brush. And we can demo this again, just real quick, on this side. I can turn. Oh, yeah. And it creates, if I push, I get, you know, I get that. If I'm up and down, I get that. I can turn and get lots of different patterns. So those are the motions you see me doing in this painting. That's what I'm doing. Those are what you're doing. Don't, it's easy to get into them and do them kind of thoughtlessly, you know, without, without purpose. And you want to avoid that for sure. You don't want to, you don't want to do them purposely uh, um, without, without purpose. But what I need is behind my black trees, it has to look like the forest still lives back there. And um, even though I'm painting over them with so many leaves, I need a rich backdrop. And even though it might seem like I'm just making an even like a dot matrix printer, I'm not. You'll notice there are areas where it's heavier and there's shadows showing through. It just looks like foliage exists. It exists. It's not a myth. The earth is round and foliage exists. For at least a little while. <laughs> Forever, but for at least a little while. <sighs> How are we doing? Are we okay? Good. I think really good. good. This has been a really, really nice, nice time. I'm, wait, I'm just waiting now, waiting to hear to see if we, I got to go get kids or what's up. Because I don't think they have clubs today, but I'm not sure if they canceled clubs because of the fun day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm waiting to find out. So my my youngest has uh, was just my my youngest Luna is just so great at making friends. Doesn't think she is. Thinks she's not like. But everybody already knows her. Um, and she doesn't realize that, that there are already rumors about her and there's all this stuff means that she just kind of made a buzz, but she's already got this wonderful group of friends, these great kids. Like one kid saw that she left her bike somewhere because Luna also like me and, and, and brought it back. Like with everything in it, it was like incredible. These kids are all so sweet and they had all decided that they wanted to go as the characters from an animation called Below Decks, which is a cable side shoot of the Star Trek universe. And uh, so they were all going to do it, and somebody had found a four pack, and it was going to be a big thing. And uh, when the when the mom who was sort of hosting the event was able to get to the store by then, I guess they were all gone. But here's the crazy thing: so, and 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 and, and it would have just been so expensive to buy the individuals that it, that's unreasonable, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Luna doesn't tell tell me till yesterday last minute that there's this costume plan, and I still have to fix it, which is really John is the driver has to fix it. I'm just still doing that same stippling through here, creating that that same pattern. Some dark, some lights. The reason you like the step-by-step -step written up things that we do. Oh, did I not tell you we write up instructions for these? I don't know how long this will continue on because the lessons are getting long and all the volunteers are ready to quit. But, <laughs> no, they're not. They're being amazing. I'm just teasing you guys. I'm just so grateful to you. And I think that's probably just my anxiety being spoken out loud because it would seem reasonable for me that you might. But anyways, they're amazing. Everyone throw them up some love because I couldn't do it alone. It's, there's data collection. There's all kinds of stuff that goes on to write those instructions, the step-by-step -step instructions. Each of them might be 50 pages. They're like their own book. Um, they're, and we call them chapters because sometimes we put them into collected chapters for books. Uh, when you go through that and we do a step, there's a photo. So you'll see my shadows, my highlights. You can slow down and duplicate them exactly. Also, everywhere we put a step, those steps are there for you for that reason. Honestly, if I could, I tried to do them for a while, pre-done for the lives, but I just, I, I was just going to burn out, and I don't know, I got some weird hate in it now, and I was just super weird for me, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to chill for a second. I'm going to dry everything and kind of take it in. Oh, yeah? Time to dry? Time to dry. All right. And maybe time to go to the restroom. I don't know. Okay. Uh, let me see. We have to. 
we have to do that thing where I have to go over here and go, no, 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 am I set up for looking at, I got uh, da, ba, da, ba, da, media player. No, it says that my my gizmo is not connected, so I'm going to have to do this while you guys are sitting here with me. I'm going to point, wait, 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 hold on, uh, push this, whoosh, and then come over here and get ready to push this other button. Whoosh. Yeah, it makes that sound effect. It happens. Okay, and I got to go down here and read this thing. It tells me, and I got to go back over here, and I got to adjust this. Are you back? I'm back from outer space. All right. Fly me to the moon says, just wondering what happened to moving to Ireland. Me too. <laughs> um, we're going to make a whole video about it. Short story is, uh, we're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> and, uh, it's many good things and many challenging things, but it's still, it's still going forward. It's just not happened yet. We are currently in Ann Arbor. Kids are in school. It was just taking so long to get, everything done the kids the kids had to be in school they had to have a life it just we just ran out of runway time and then also it was a much more costly thing so we just also ran out of runway expenses and um john's like she's monologuing like a villain let's put her big we'll get <laughs> that ready for it oh okay and so you know that was really challenging like we had flipped our house and we invested in that house flip based on an agreement and that agreement was not honored and uh, so that so we over invested in that flip and then um, but that was okay because we had this runway and, and it was our lawyers were like it's fast 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 and then it, it wasn't and then we were like oh my goodness my mom's coming back would like to be in her home again and uh, <laughs> and the kids can't go to school in Texas and uh, what are we gonna do and so we just made a very fast decision which I told the the patrons about but I'm gonna tell you the whole story. Because this isn't actually a story. This is the boring story ever. What actually happened to us was not boring. And uh, uh, to anyone who might be worried that we're going to tell the whole truth, don't worry, we won't. Um, no, just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, <laughs> but we are going to tell you everything that, that happened to us and uh, how, what all is going on with that in, in a video because I think it deserves its own video. I'm going to go take an intermission. I recommend that you stand, you stretch, you take care of your body in some way. Are you a person who forgets to drink water? Please drink water. Are you a person who forgets to breathe? Take this moment and go. <sighs> and if you're like me, if you've been holding it and you hold it to the point where it's crisis, for whatever reason, you can join me in what I'm about to do. All right, done. Oh, you think you're ready? I think I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready, Freddy. Okay. All right. Let me see if I hit the play button.
Oh, wait. I don't have your mic turned on. Yeah, there it is. Okay. It wasn't on because you don't need to listen to me, Pete. You don't need to listen to... That's a whole channel that YouTube doesn't allow. Or probably does. Probably does. <laughs> There's no safety here for you. YouTube, I mean, YouTube cares, but it also doesn't care. It's kind of like a mindless automaton going through with a lot of lovely people who work there. It's gotten better. It used to be that you needed an adult, but not anymore. No, actually, there's still, I need an adult. Man, they keep running into things. Like, every time they stomp <laughs> out one little bad act or some new group goes, you know what creepy thing we figured out how to do? <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. Well, Just go to OnlyFans, will you, please? Just go there. It's a whole platform for you. Well, here's our Just go. Right. You can put me small. Oh, small? You ready to go small? That's right. Yeah. A little, boop, boop, and then we give you a step. Can I? Can, okay, so before we st Oh, you step me. Oh, okay. it's okay. I can step again. I want to show them. Can I Can I brag on my kid? Can yeah. I do that? Can I be a proud, proud mama? My eldest child uh, is helping me out. Um, there's uh, this really cool thing John found, and it's kit crafted, and there are these wood cutouts, and you can paint them, and I got all excited about it. So as a surprise, he uh, reached out to them, and they sent a bunch of stuff for us to do, you know, maybe something with, and then I just... It, they came late. I couldn't get it. Couldn't get it. Couldn't get it. And then, they, and then I was like, I wasn't even sure we should do it. And then the kids saw them and lost their minds, including my oldest, Honey. And Honey did a short for us. Um, can you hand that to me, babe? Yeah, I thought I was sorry. Yeah, I just no, have that, to show it to you. You I can just, see the short. You can right. see the short. Um, but look at this. This is my kid did this with Posca pens. It's on wood. And then they're like, they're just the little. I got little glue things here. Isn't that like amazing? So you can see that short. It's Honey's debut. It's kind of like a mom versus kid thing, but I feel like Honey. This is the this is the this is the first one that came out. I feel like Honey like really took a big swing with this one, and I don't know that I had anything in my mind or my heart, honestly, as creative and fun as this. So I am very excited about this and what Honey did here so much. And take that and drop it. Oh yeah. I just hate it. So you got you freakishly long arms, and look what happened. It's okay. Fix it. <laughs> So I'm very excited about that. I was super proud of that. By the way, um, there's a code if you want to, they have tons of stuff like this. And if you like doing that with your kids, my kids are insane about eating little wood things. Um, it is kit crafted and you can get 10% off your order uh, with the code uh, Sherpa10. Sure. Yep, Sherpa10. Sure. And also you get um So if you use Sherpa10, sure you get 10% 10, 10 off. And we have Posca pens at a great price. And now we have $10 shipping. So either one of those things. Yeah, it was, it was free shipping over $75 on those kits too, so. Okay, so That's and cool. it'll have my face on the page, and that is a real one. This is not a website that is ripping me off or my in, like my face. They're friendly. This is this is this is this is somebody who worked with us in video games. Honestly, <laughs> these were video game peoples. Who is that trying. why they did? Because I get my stuff stolen all the time and put on stuff. But they're like, hey, can we do something together? Yeah. I've even sent them over a design. But I think we'll do some more of these further down the road. So that's that. I had to brag. All right. On to the next step. There you go. I gave you a new fresh. I gave you the fresh step. You gave me a fresh, I step. Gave you the fresh step. Fresh. Exciting. She's so exciting to me. Where is my droppy dropper? I want my droppy dropper. I don't see it where I want it to be. Where is my droppy dropper? Oh no, don't be upside down. <gasps> that would have been terrible. That was my brush upside down. I don't know where it is, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this mister. This is just water in it. And the reason I'm misting the black is so that I can do better lines, as you do, because there's so, so, so many lines. When the f and we'll just sort of fill in. Let's 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 make our focal tree first. So I'm gonna start it with black. And I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna load up my brush. You can see I'm swirling around the water to improve flow. And my tree is right, really here above the the leaf line over here on the lower left quadrant that we had from earlier. So I'm gonna come in and say, this is this tree. Ah, oh, it's decided. So I'm going to come up, and it's fairly straight up the tree. Has a titch of a lean to it. I like when trees, you know, have some personality, so I'm definitely going to... I like that top bit that that's, like, kind of thick and splits out because the tree was maybe a double tree. Double tree, double tree, what are one. you giving me? It's got more than one. It's got a double tree, got a double tree. Why? Oh, why? 
Oh, uh, uh. Oh, that's oh. not what I wanted. What? Oh, it no? started playing again. No, no, no. No, no, I, no. It was queued up, guys, so I did. did My it, pee was I, queued up, I'm so pushed, you might as well queue up. Push the button. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's real serious. Like, at this, I've had three kids, uh, two of them at home, and one of them naturally in the hospital because at a certain age, they don't let you have your kids at home anymore because it scares them all to death. Mm-hmm. Right, and they start calling you a geriatric pregnancy, and that's super fun <laughs> when you're pregnant and hormonal, and people are trying to remind you why you don't want to kill everyone around you. Um, calling you a geriatric pregnancy, I think, is when a doctor takes their life into their <laughs> hands. I know mine did because he stepped back. <laughs> he took a step back when he said it to me. I don't know what... Lo- my husband will tell you, I don't play poker, and on occasion, I apparently get a look on my face that threatens bodily harm. I don't bodily harm anybody, but apparently I got a good mean face, which I don't believe. That doctor thought so. Silly doctor. <laughs> I'm kind of exaggerating some of the split just because I really, really like it. And some of that will get painted into that tree as we go. Now, diagonally up the canvas, and it needs to be a little diagonally in, is the next tree. It will end up being kind of a slightly different uh, value because it's a different type of tree. It's got more of a gray bark. Then the dark black and brown bark. But it's super duper close to this main tree, so we can bring that there. Trees are one of the places where my being straight line challenged actually plays in my favor because trees are also straight line challenged. <laughs> so we can hang out together. And be straight line challenged. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Me and you in a color blue. Painting all the way across the land. Me and you in a color blue. How I love being able to freehand. I did that like right off the top of my head. Huh. You just freehanded that. Yeah, I don't actually, I don't have a music channel, but it, I do on occasion sing. So it is all my kids just randomly sing. And it is a regular thing in our house to shout, stop laughing and singing. <laughs> <laughs> It's just because one of us will start to just go off and be super loud and disruptive somewhere. Mm-hmm. We just we just like I don't know. Song gets in our head, earworm, and then then we're off to the races. Off to the races to see the pretty faces. So you can see sometimes I go into the brush bucket, the water bucket, to get a little more water, and I bring a, a brush worth of water over to the tree, and then you know I'm gonna come over to the other side, John. So first I'm putting in my Sorry. big, my big, big, big trees. My big, big, big trees. Big trees. And then I'm going to put in my little, little, little trees. And you can have big, big, big trees, little, little, little trees. It's all okay. Just enjoy your tree. I'm going to come right here, right here, right here, right here. Let's see if we can. This one I think is fairly up. I'm going to put that right up there. All the way. Ooh, 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 ooh. All the way. All the way. Sorry. <laughs> little talking heads got in there. <laughs> I'm a little talking head. Hi, I am a grown adult. And I'm on YouTube. <laughs> That's how I feel like when I'm at adult parties with other adults. And they're like, what do you do? <laughs> I'm always like. I don't know if I am comfortable enough to say what I do because I'm an adult and I make my living on YouTube. And 
it I can't it's very rare unless I go to a YouTube event that I get to meet other like real real grown adults who are also on YouTube. See how I'm making like a second little and it's got a nice long one that goes off that canvas. Ay 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 paint this tree. I can paint this forest live. I can paint this forest live. I don't need to pre-record and edit. By the way, I've never practiced this before. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still fine. You just gotta take your time. Now this one is actually pretty far up into the forest. So we'll put this one up the hill. It actually, once we get some basic stuff in, it'll be a short little run downhill after that. You got this. Now a little tip about trees is that it is um, most North American trees, not all trees around the whole world everywhere, but most North American trees will be thicker at the bottom and get thinner as they grow up and the branches cannot be bigger than the trunk that they're attached to and they will forever taper out. Right. So... I get North American trees, not trees around the entire world. I'm going to go ahead and put a little uh, blending medium in that so that it doesn't dry out. And again, I'm talking about the satin glazing liquid. Now, it comes in gloss. It comes in satin. Satin has a matte finish and apparently does not aggravate John's cameras half to death, which is true. I agree. It's much easier to photograph. I like the gloss. It makes the color super rich and deep, but it is just unfilmable. So we're on satin, by the way. Both of them work equally well. So if they ever send you the wrong one, just use up the bottle. doesn't matter. Its job is to slow the drying time of your paint and extend your acrylic colors. That's what it does. It's the only product that does both things. Two things. Two, two, two things. Two things, my friend. Mm -hmm, mm -mm. And I'm going to come down a little bit more. Maybe, maybe closer to here. Mm, no, nope, he's kind of, he's down, but he's not all the way down. I can see his base in the, in the shadows. Do you have to paint every tree? in the landscape. No! I'm going to paint most of them, but you don't have to paint every tree. You don't have to paint everything that's in a landscape. No. If you found the most beautiful landscape of your life and somebody put an ugly trash can that's overflowing slightly to the corner of your reference photo, just don't paint the trash can. We don't have that option in life. In life, we have to deal with the reality of the trash can. Mm. But on our canvas, we don't have to deal with the trash can at all. This one's down again in the hill a little bit. Mm. I'm going to move this one even down a little. And then I'm going to pile some stuff up over it. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. It is decided. I am the decider. You have decided to you decide. You are the decider at home of your canvas. I am the decider of my canvas. I, I hope for any of you that did the Cthulhu painting for the 13 days of Halloween and you're giving it to a young person, especially if it's a young person that doesn't, you know, know you have that coolness in you and you're going to be doing it for the, I, I just want to hear the story. Just share the story with me yeah. of the young teen person's brain breaking when their adult, you know, caregiver, grandparent, you know, whoever is in their life that you're painting it for, paints them something that they're into that they don't even know you could be, like, know about even. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be, like, blown away seeing you as the coolness that you are. I love to hear about, like, those moments with the paintings. I love to hear about your experiences with the paintings. Absolutely.
Now, some of these will be painted out. We're just putting them there and then we'll come and put little bits over everything. Right. And that will be kind of like its thing. We just got a lot of these to do. We got another big hot mess of everything up front. And I really love this tree. It's a crazy tree. So up here, right about when our first little dark area is, I'm going to come here and plant this big crazy tree. And its first little line kind of comes off here and comes up over our light area. Now, this one has a much thicker base because it supports, it's one of those, like, they actually don't let trees do this in, like, arboretums and stuff like that. But in nature, sometimes trees will grow and split and grow and split. And it, it it's just something that will happen. And I just love when I get to paint, paint one of those trees. It's like, I've decided to be a rebel. You know, show that glazing medium again a little later. Yeah. They'll want to see that when you have a chance. They're like, what is that stuff? Show it to me again. We will get it shown again. As soon as we can. Just putting those like hot mess of branches up there at the top. Talk to you a little something about branches. A lot of people want to do this. And it looks like a chicken's foot or a fork to them. What you're going to want to do. Yeah. One of the easiest ways to get around that is to take a branch out. Line is thicker when it starts. Tapers when it goes. Come here. Try the initial curve, curve, curve. Um, branches don't always do this, but I find that people can pick this one up first. See how that works? Yes. What if I want it to go another way? And come down here. See how that looks much more like a branch than the chicken foot? There you go. Much more like a branch than chicken foot. So that's what you're trying to do. Hope that helps. Yeah, Doesn't it helps. let me know and I'll keep working on ways to help. Because that's helpful. my whole deal. Just kind of go along and just quietly plot a new little tree branch, plot a new little tree branch. I'm just adding glazing medium to that to improve the flow of my brush. I roll it on the paper towel and I load the toe. Mm -hmm. See how we start to fill that space up. Now these will be tiny, tiny little lines.
You will lose a lot of these, so don't do the best trick of your life that you're painting over with leaves, because you will be so frustrated. <laughs> it is nothing like, it is just wild when you're like going along, you're like, that was literally the best tree of my life. And I just painted all of these leaves over it. It's a super frustrating reality. Yeah. Just, it just is, man. Just is. I'm going to improve the flow. Go with the flow, sir. Go with the flow. Just kind of putting some background Just the trees. trees. Got lots of you, you got to see the forest with the trees. That's right. No forest unless you've trees. No forest unless you've bees. No forest unless you breathe. I'm going along. Just painting so many trees. All right. I feel like that's. <laughs> Good. That's a good number of the trees. A lot of these over here I can put in, but I've got to be more like. It's almost a half tree that we see. We don't see the whole tree. I'm going to come back into my brown with this black this time. It's just not quite as dark as it goes. It is, but it's just not. Okay, I feel like I've got a good architecture to start with here. I'm going to dry everything so my black doesn't smear anywhere. Ja ja ja. Ja ja ja. Ja ja leave now. So, uh, okay. So we're going to dry this, and we're so close to getting done. I think we're very close here. It looks. I think Cinnamon says no. She says no. She doesn't think it's so close. Not there yet. Not there yet. Not there All yet. Right. But we are more than halfway okay, through. Okay. So. If we're there, let me do this then. Let me go over here and go here and go. I'm going to put out more yellow ochre. You ready for another step? Yeah. Okay. I'll get that another step. Do you want me to dry longer so you can do the ad? No, no, you're okay. <laughs> do the ad, man. Do the ad. Make the YouTube. God's heavy. All right. There's some burnt sienna up there. I'll go back over the colors just again in a second so you know where everything is. Because sometimes as I paint, you know, they get a little mudged and midged and messed up and everywhere so we'll go over that again just just real quick okay that it slipped but all right so i've got mars black this is the satin glazing liquid burnt sienna yellow ochre cad yellow cad red titanium white zinc white doxazine purple and i have ultramarine blue and that's kind of just what we were using back there for the sky and you can see like it's amazing how that does tend to look like that bright kind of sky are we not just impressed with ourselves you know Woo! hey i see c blanton and francesca francesca henderson saying this is pretty and uh oh people are talking about they're losing trees because of drought yeah no we're gonna we're gonna definitely see some changes Definitely, definitely, but I don't know what they are. All right, let's continue on here. We're gonna we're gonna come through. I've got my 
think I'm going to, I'm going to, I've got my big chunk in D brush here just in case it needs to come out. But I think I'm going to go down to this D brush and we'll see if this does what I need. Does this brush do what I need? I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my yellow ochre. And interestingly enough, I'm going to get some of my docks purple into it. You could use black, but things can go green. And this interestingly does something kind of else. So right here. Can you see how we're just painting over quite a lot of it? So that's why I was like, yeah, it's, it's not that big of a deal. You're going to have parts of this showing, parts not showing. That's Doc's purple. That's, ca uh, that's yellow ochre, burnt sienna. Got a little heavy on my mix there, but that's okay. I need a lot of it, so we're all right. I just needed a little more to the yellow and a little more purple than the burnt sienna and we're there. There we go. That's good. So this is that dark leaf that you're seeing out there. It's not quite a brown. And you can see how by hiding some of that tree. really pulls that landscape in. I can even come in with a little black here. Trying to say maybe some of this is a little deeper. Mm, not really necessary, I don't think. Didn't add anything. Okay, and then up here, got a lot. I think for that one, I'll come through it with, uh, I'll paint it specifically and come through with lighter. But I'll focus the brown one over here. Now I'm going to come in and get a little bit of my cad yellow and my um, yellow ochre together. Make sure they're really well mixed. And I'm going to just tap. So what you're looking to do is create the tops of branches where light is maybe coming down and hitting things. You don't want to create just a uniform yellow. And I find with everything, I always need like three values to really make it pop across all surfaces is when I really get it. So that's like a thing for me. Okay, this is the number eight Artney again. Art, Artney. Artney brush, Artney brush. Now I'm going to come forward and just, just a lot more yellow into this mix. And I'm going to actually, I think I'm going to get some titanium white here. Let's hope we got it correctly. So what you see me doing is trying to just make sure that my, my color here is evenly mixed. Because what, what I don't want is a bright spot of yellow or white. Because again, that makes snow. So if you have in your stippling color a spot of white or a spot of yellow, you can end up with quite a lot of snow just because they will fight against your work to create shapes within the chaos. And that's really what we're doing is we're just creating the shapes that we see within the chaos of all of these leaves. And there are so many leaves, aren't there?
That's looking good. I'm kind of not sad for us. I don't want to come too far back because I've got to come in with these uh, very red leaves and I want to edge them yellow. So to do that, I've got to keep that space sort of protected from everything. A little more yellow into that mix. You can always tap it out when you have it. So let me show you what I mean real quick. When you're doing a stipple, I'll do it uh, up over this, right? See how that uniform co color lets me stipple. But say I had a spot of red, spot of white a couple places. Do you see how that creates snow very quickly? The idea of just nothing's particularly, I don't know that you were saying that. Do I need to do that again? Okay. Oh, okay. Right, so see how that's just creating that so if I have white in here, look what happens when I stipple it out. I don't see my color that I mixed. I just get this messiness visually. Well, I can lean back for overhead zoom. Make snow. That's what I'm avoiding. That solid uniform random distribution which creates an almost indistinct like a very distinctive right. little field and that just is more than your than anyone's eyes can overcome now i'm going to use a teeny tiny d brush i think i'm going to use the artney you could use the texture here uh, if your if your artney is too fluffy i don't know why i said that so excitedly all right i'm going to come into my brown and black because i like them Get a little zinc white in it. I'm going to start painting some bark on the tree. I'm going to have a little bit of an angle, I think. Talk about the trunk twisting. It's just zinc at this stage, so it's, it's very... Uh, light. more burnt sienna on there. It's just very, very, barely seen bark. And then I can always get a little of my titanium white into that mix there, which is interesting, which is a lighter color I'm going to need later. When I want to have the edge, I can face the flat edge of my brush to to this. Well, let me show you what you can do here. You can come in on the rounded side and you get these sort of nice marks. And then if you come on the edge, see where the edge is mm -hmm. gives me a firmer mark. Even though it's not completely firm, you can see that it's a little more controlled than that. So that's those are the those are the motions that you're seeing me do there. Got it. I know I'm going to see a bunch of these, well, in about a week, because I know it takes you guys a little bit longer, most of you. And that is very normal, by the way. You guys are painting it, so. That's nice. Get a little darker. a little more white. I think in this one I'm going to get some yellow ochre into it too. Oh, that's good. Oh. There we go. And I'm going to use shorter marks back and forth on this one.
just back and forth creating kind of like this rougher bark glazing medium if I need it little roughy 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 bark marks painting a forest hmm. On a Friday, because I missed my Thursday class. <laughs> and it's a very long forest. So much forest for the trees. I'm just coming here with a little bit of that kind of yellow in that. And there we go. And on the back side, I just lightly dry brush it so it's not just a solid field of black even though it it will read almost like a solid field of black right because yeah. it's it's a it's a much more you know considered little tree i'm going to grab a little of my brown here in my black for this little upcoming tree right here coming up this side Making some rough spots. Scratch marks, aren't they? Yeah, the old ones. Little scratchy ones. I love bark. Yeah. I just love it. It's super fun to work with. All right. A little bit of my cat red, my cat yellow. My burnt sienna. Bark is colorful, my friends. It is, and it's got a lot of personality on every tree, every tree, everywhere, all the time. Every squirrel house has personality. You don't know it, but this tree is hollow, and there's a raccoon that lives in there. Ah. You know it now because I told you, but you didn't know it until I told you. So I can have secrets in my paintings that even the buyer doesn't know about. Mm -hmm. When you're nailing it, you're nailing it. When you're nailing it, you're nailing it. You're nailing it. Nailing it. Okay, it is for now. You want to tell honey that I am stuck? Mm, no, they're still they're still doing. She had to go to uh, her things. Well, I was supposed to go do nails, but did that get rescheduled because I got stuck here? Yes. Yay! As far as I know. Yay! I just don't want to mess up everybody's day because I was included and I appreciate that. Come here now. The issue with this bark is I don't want to take it out of its dark, too dark thing. And the reason is, is that I need that contrast for the background. And it would be that. So that's why I'm, I've still got some texture here. It's still visible to my eye a little bit, right? But not to the point where I can't see the tree anymore. I'm like right. maybe one of these, maybe this guy. A little bit here. Oh, again, we're going to have lots of leaves. So. You don't need to have everything. I don't, I don't. It can feel easy. It can be so easy for everything to feel like it all needs to be done right now. I'm grabbing a little bit of that gray color. I right, whether I had the white in that, but it doesn't. It can be. A little bit here, because this is where the light's hitting it. Oh my goodness, let's call that a step. Boy, are we been busy and so tired yeah. of all of it, but we're good. 
It's pretty good. It's pretty good. We don't have that much more to do. Not that much more. All right. There we go. We're going to have uh, almost, I think, there. This is this is looking so good, though. I like the path. It is the it is a little path all the way down. You know what? Uh, uh, hmm. There's an interesting question. I don't know offhand. Hmm? Uh, does anyone know what an isolant is? I don't. An isolation coat? No, no, no. Some that no isolant. There's a question in, in chat that I just didn't know. <sighs> so this will be this will be 17. There we go. Now we're on 17. No, I got nothing on that. I could say isolation coat. I would guess I need a little more context um, on that, and then maybe I know, but for sure I need more context to know. All right, we are going to. I'm going to start painting in some of our leaves and I'm going to use, um, I can use my eight and I can use, um, my nice little zero or my big one. But right now I think small places, I'll use this little guy and then big, bigger spaces. I'll use the eight. I'm going to come in and start to paint some, some thoughts. All right. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my yellow. There's the green from earlier. Let's get a little green in it. A lot more yellow. So the green where it came from is that uh, ultramarine blue. And a little bit of white. Now a couple ways we can do this. I can put the branches back like if I were to go and then I just put them back. And uh -huh. that may be easier than preciously painting around the tree. All right, I will put this here and then and then put that back or I may leave it over because it looks actually pretty good. Yeah, it is. I might want to switch brushes. I'm not loving the leaf pattern it's putting down. And that will happen. Sometimes you're working and you're like, man, I am not into this at all. It's not doing what I want. And it isn't executing the way I envisioned it in my head. Mm So if I go notice that that allows those branches to weave around the tree. Some in back, some in front. I'm okay with that. I might pull that one out. So this is that stage when you come in and you start to decide where does my foliage go? Where did my foliage go? Long time happening. Where did my foliage go? Put that aside for a second. I'll grab this bigger one and come in and start to try to put in this rusty red one. So let's take a little bit of my cad red here and a smidge of my docks purple.
And remember, I'm going to have to put some of this behind. So some of those tree trunks get put back. Do your little stipple stipples. Stipple stipples looking for places to put branches over and under, over and under. This is where the leaves just come in. And it just takes, a. you just got to focus a little bit. And there's just real no way to around that, the focus part. Now I'm going to take a lot more yellow over to my red. I think I actually want to take it even into a brighter orange. So I'm going to rinse out, rinsing out. And I'm going to take... A little more yellow over to my brighter red. See how that's just slightly brighter? Dabble, dabble, dabble. Dabble, dabble, dabble. You're just lost in that. You, I do. I get a little lost in it, but I really like it. Yeah. Now, a little more yellow, a little more orange. I come to the edges of these and I may need to switch to that smaller brush again just to have the control I need. So to my yellow orange. Anything that you paint away, you can put back in. So don't feel like you're ever just, oh no, I can't ever fix it. Because you can. Probably as soon as the layer dries. Kids used to come to me with art and be like, oh, it's ruined. It's just ruined. Now they come with me and they're like, how do I fix it? Because they've learned eventually over time, it's just probably not ruined. There's probably a way to get it where you're trying to get it. Take a little yellow over into my white. I haven't rinsed my brush. Kind of add a little bit of that. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Uh. There. I'm not, I'm not sad or unhappy with that.
Oh, got too much red there. Yeah. When that happens, you just... Was it you're happy with it? These are just little bits of color that could be in the forest. You know, rinse out. Probably need a little more cad yellow. We are cooking through. We're actually starting to be on the downhill slide. Oh, uh, yeah? I know it was a big hill. It's a big hill. That's right. It was a big hill, but we're on the downhill slide now. Come here and take a little bit of my cad red, cad yellow, and a bit of docks. And my big number eight D brush. Now I'm going to tipple out some branches here. See how that just gives it a little more zhuzh zhuzh. Just getting my yellow. That's Come through here. We're going to stipple a little bit at the base of the trees. And that's just because... It's base stippling? Base stippling. <laughs> we got to do the base stipple. You got to do the base stipple. Notice that I use the edge of my brush where I don't want to go on the tree. If I go on the tree, I've just got to paint it back. Like I showed you where we wove those branches around. Because we can do anything we want when we're painting. I do anything I want when I'm painting. All right. Just making a nice orange. I just love making all the oranges. They're so fun. And then you add a little purple to it, and then you got some of the nicest colors. You really do get the nicest colors, mm -hmm. though. A little more red. A little more docks. That's just a little bit dark, darker, and then you can see that it, what it does is it lets us put these objects in different spaces and zones. Don't want pops of red, so I have to tap that out because that's not something that I want. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice yellow wood. There's no divergent trail. There's no two paths. Just one. They did not diverge here. Where have all the flowers gone? No time passing. All right. So you can see I just find little moments of light. And I get into it. I'm like, oh, let's go. And, and then the light's like, are you sure? And I'm like, oh, I'm definitely, definitely sure. A little more yellow into this, and then we're going to come into here and see that pop of yellow right there? That's going to come mess me up. So that's why I'm flipping the brush over and just making sure. Don't want a hidden pop of yellow. Huh? But nothing. You're, just, you're a different place than I thought you were. Oh. I did not know. That's all right. Keep in mind, this is just one type of stipple, and we haven't done our finishing brush work. Which will pull it all together in short order. I don't know what short order actually means, though. Mm 
I'm coming out a little green back when I want it. I just want to make sure that I've got this blended as amply as I'd like. Blend, 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 blend. Yes, now. Da 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 da. Backer. So my brain just goes the whole time I work, and I I know that's a lot. It's a lot to hang in with me. Let's take this brush. This is the number eight Artney brush. I'm gonna come up here, and we're gonna. Find some little moments of light. We're going to say in this forest, even though it is a very yellow and orange forest, there's little moments of light. And we want to see those moments. Don't let the sun go down on me. Just going along. You're good. You're good. Much more yellow here, but you can see I'm working very hard to make sure that I don't Leaving that dark there. Oh, that was too much. So I'm going to go into my darker color. You're like, you're too much. And it's like, too much, how much? I'm like, too much, too much. Back with dark. Mm -hmm. So that's how, if I feel like I put too much somewhere, that's how I get it back. You know, I don't think when I started YouTube... I would have thought I could paint. I I could paint the forest, but I don't think I could have painted it live. Yeah. No. No. Because it's a different set of skills. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a... See where that pop of yellow is? I'm just making sure it's not going to sneak up on me. That's what I'm yeah. doing. Making sure you don't sneak up on me. You don't do that ever. I won't put up with it in any way. I'm just making sure I've got a nice little, little, little. Yeah, just a little, little. Little, little. Now I'm going to rinse out a bit. Rinse out a bit. Rinse, rinse out a bit. Rinse, rinse, rinse. And I'm going to come here with my purple. Oh, I can put up more red. Wow. Yeah. It's a very, very involved little painting, isn't it? And I mean, so we still have branches to do. We still have some more leaves to do. We finish out the road and just the last little touches. But it's... Not going to look how we want it to look unless we do those things. So let's right. make sure we do those things. I am taking a little bit of my red and purple together. I'm going to come right here. Hello, Delphine. I'm just making sure that we've got a little bit. Oh, no, bit it's of... Daphne. Huh? I, I thought I saw Delphine and it was Daphne. Oh, hi, Daphne. Definitely put some of this darker kind of leaf foliage here. It really does help the um, trees feel a little more grounded. I like to break it up, like the ground up with like lights and darks, you know. That's that's a big, big, big thing is getting that, that ground like. Here 
We put a little under there. So we're, what are we doing here? We're adding shadows under these trees. I go back in and I get some yellow into this. That's how I integrate it into the world that I'm in. I'm going to take a little bit of this over here, maybe a little bit of red. A little bit. <laughs> So we've got our nice little shaded areas. Brown and purple is also really nice if you've never played with it. A little dark up there. All right. I think we have enough structure. You're like, wait, structure? <laughs> no, you're kidding, right? No, it's just detailing stuff at the end, and we will be just fine doing it. Oh, 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 oh. oh no, I'm twisted up the wrong way. Gotta spin my chair the other direction so I can go boop, and then the people who went boop away, they got the commercial. Because that's the commercial button that I have to push when she does the hair drying thing, because that's the new evil job that I have, is to push that evil button. But that somehow keeps the things away for a little bit longer. There's a clock timer saying that there's little kids probably waiting to get picked up at some point soon, so I might have to go get them some sooner than lighter-ish. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Uh, so you're going to be looking for another step here. I'm going to look for another step. I'm going to take my number 12 round blender by Princeton. I'm going to get a little of my zinc and I'm taking it over to kind of to my uh, yellow oak over here where the purple and the brown was. I make a lighter color. Ooh, that's nice. I'm going to bring this over from the right towards the left, lightening some of the path. It really, uh, Jane says it really came together fast. Hmm? It has come together fast. It does. Like, I know these are long lessons, but usually one spends a week doing these paintings, so I feel like I cook through them pretty quick. Just making sure that the light in the path is feels like we want it to feel. All right, so now we have sort of a dark side of the path and a lighter side of the path. Yeah, that's looking really good. Got some yellow, got some red. I may have to put out more color, but let's see how we do. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my yellow here, smidge of my green, get some burnt sienna over into that. There it is. Just adding little bits of that along those edges because there was just that wonderful pop. And I feel like those wonderful little pops are, well, they're kind of delightful. So I'll put a little there. A little green is just a, a nice little addition to the world that you're in. It's a very nice addition. Very nice little addition to the world that you're in. Another nice little addition to the world that you're in is many, 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 many little twigs. Not so many that you lose the whole painting. Nature can do more than you. Mm -hmm. So sometimes as artists, we have to, you know, uh, even unless we're extreme technicians. Extreme? Yeah. Like jumping off of high buildings? Mm -hmm. Extreme? Jumping off a of high buildings extreme. The base jumping? 
parachute. Yeah. So you can see you can put little trunks back in. If you feel like a trunk is needed, you can come here and say, all right. I brush and water and kind of improve the flow of my block. I don't want to be fighting it. So do you ever sell any of your paintings? I do, and I think there's some on the website right now. And I... Um, I don't know where the unicorn went, but I could show you one I just finished. That I, oh, I know. It's on the table behind me. I could show you one that's going to be posted for sale that I haven't posted for sale yet. We'll do it here towards the end. I don't know where it's on the table. I see it. Okay. Before we go, we'll do that. Okay. We'll show it. Well, no, because we mentioned it. We might as well. All right. I'll show you this. I haven't decided what I'm doing with it. If I'm putting it up, we got it recorded for a short. But I just wasn't... 100% sure yet and then the kids really really liked it so I don't know it'll get put up for a vote soon and I'm we'll going to put it up for sale one way or the other if, even if I don't teach it I'm selling it because <laughs> I have to it's staring at me <laughs> but I just you want to look go up close to it Let's see here I mean, it's yeah it's harder to see it with the it's actually really good you can see it really good out here Okay, so that's coming up. That's coming up. And uh, I think this one already sold, and I'm sorry, but it was awesome, and it sold. I didn't even get a chance. I just it put it up, and it sold. But that's um, a future lesson. Yep, that was going to be on, on. Now, as I come out on, on these little branches and things, right, and I've got little branches, you know, that are just sort of in this space, I want to kind of make some little leaves. I'll show you how I do that. And I don't know if... Uh, so I don't like... I don't meticulously paint a perfect leaf. I paint a leaf shape. So I generally put a little point out here. And then I add a little... And a little... See how that just makes a leaf? Yeah. Where it's just a little line. So if I got a point there, then I can come like that. Just little shapes. Just do little shapes. So those are the leaf shapes, and then they just connect to little branches. So that's all we're doing. Because you will absolutely have um, dead wood. somewhere mm -hmm. that just that's just gonna happen where there's somebody who's whose little leaves just fully died the die you know and they didn't turn and they're about to fall so it's also good to get some of that in and then i like to come back I'm, i can come in with purple and red or brown and generally i'll I leave them black, but I add a little brown to them. So I don't really change their value, but it does sort of help them stay integrated into the into the environment. Let's look overhead. That's nice. So we got it a is. nice little story there. And that's a lovely little story. Uh, HMCC08901. Miss Helen, man, they made you. Take a whole beginning, didn't they? There was a How do you get the yellow look vibrant? So 
Here's some reasons why my yellow is vibrant. First reason is I use cad yellow and I use acrylic from Sennelier. You could also use golden, Holbein. Uh, you can use Matisse Dervon, PBO. There's a bunch of professional companies that do a very vibrant. So that's the first one. Is the quality of the yellow is just very high. It's right. very, good. very good. It's a place I choose to invest. Um, because it has good coverage, and cheap yellows don't, and yellows are already transparent as it is. So there's that. The other thing is that I have a three-pool water bucket. So if you look here, it's three containers, yeah. and this one is, I don't know if you can tell Cleanest. it, it's clean. Yeah. But it's clean, and so I, I wash here. This has got ribs in it, and I come here and I rinse out again, and then I hit here, and then so my water is always clean. Um and then I'm and I'm making sure my brushes are rinsed out when I need to go back into a vibrant color. So if I have a lot of purple in my brush, I need to make sure all that purple's out. So those are all the little things that are going on to um, feel like, oh wow, like that that's like super duper wow. That's what's afoot. That's so let's get a little bit of our um Uh oh, what do we, do we gotta go? No, not yet. You're okay. okay. I was like, oh no. So I'm going to grab some yellow, yellow, yellow here. And we're going to, it had a little green in it. We're going to put out a few more little. A few more little leaves. Oh, we got, no, we got, I, oh, I, if you thought you were getting out soon, I'm so sorry. <laughs> did, did you think that was going to happen? Oh, okay. <laughs> Crazy. But up here, I do want to have some bright little leaves. And we're going to, we're going to do a glazing trick that, um. Super powerful. And I'm going to just dab here a couple places. So these aren't like the little leaves that I did on that branch. These are just individual dots. And this is going to help the painting feel very like. Um, da da <laughs> Daphne Devine says, that's a perfect rinsing bucket. Yes, it is. I don't know if I have it in my store. I thefted it from my mother. So if you, I, I will try to get this in the store if I don't already have it. I, if it's possible for me to have it, I will put it in my art store. Um, but my mom, Ginger Cook, um, and she paints, she has live classes on Monday nights. That, again, I took it from her studio, and I think she has it in her Amazon store. So um, you might be able to kind of get some from her that way. But I think, um, Can we use Castile soap on brushes? If you mean soap made with lard, yeah. Yeah. I believe that's Castile soap, is soap that's made with lye and a fat. Is that correct? Um, I did a lot of soap making to make my art brush soap. And I make my own art brush soap. And I do a low uh, fat, high lye soap with an ingredient, a, a, a crazy set of ingredients nobody else is going to do. But... Um, they're based on uh, classical medieval uh, products that you would see in the studio that would have been used to clean brushes and, and, and remove pigment. I think I'll be done in 30. Yeah. You have an appointment. I do? Yeah. Oh, I'm so lucky. Oh, just more of the, more of the leaves. Yeah, just putting little little Can pops of these bright yellow leaves that are here that kind of almost appear to be floating out in the forest. And that is just... Jane? Hi, Jane. She was curious. Are you Have you ever used Castile soap? No, I, I was answering okay, okay, that. Okay, and I, I was asking because you made the soap with me. I believe Castile is a, little, is a lye soap, is it not? Oh, uh, gosh. With a fat. I thought that's what Castile was. I don't. I think it was answer. made from like pot ash and pig fat. I don't know. Uh, oh, ca olive oil. That's what it is. It is the lye soap with olive oil. You oh. are correct from the Castile region. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds about right there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.
we've thought about making a video on how to make soap, but we're trying to get uh, uh, another place to. Well, I've got. I'll follow up back on that because we had. Uh... My soap's like the best. Yes. Now, just in case we have to go suddenly, I don't want to leave one thing undone, and then we got to go. So I'm going to do this one, one thing through here, and then I'm going to continue futzing around until John okay. makes me get up to go do my nails. Makes you. Forces you. I know. My husband forces me to do my nails. It's just so rude. I like how this has turned out, though. Yeah, I do, too. It's, it's worth the time and work and effort. It is. Um, I'm sure the time lapse of it will do quite well. Um, I have this, I keep having this idea of, of a way of doing this that just um, makes it less time intensive to watch, but still, like, how could I have a, um, you know, a real time one if you needed that kind of a thing? And so I'm, I'm working on it. John always worries when I work on creating a new format. <laughs> Oh, I would think I put too many leaves over there, but that's okay. I'm very happy with this. Very. I think artists need references. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I don't care how fantasy they're doing. If they've got several different components in a fantasy painting, they they generally will have references of elements like if it's a like if i'm looking to do bat wings i'm gonna look at pictures of bat wings even if i'm sticking them on a horse and then i'm gonna look at a picture of a horse right i'm not going to try to do everything from memory so i think it's important no oh, i don't like that at all I just kind of didn't like that, so I have to take some of that out. That was just me coming back to that background color and breaking that up because I just felt like that was creating a like a real. Oh, isn't this pretty? How do we not have five hundred people in here? Do they not know? I guess they think because I've been here for ten years and YouTube's like she must be over by now. Let's put all the new new out. Guess what? Not. And I'm gonna keep leveling it up. And I'm gonna keep leveling it up. And I'm gonna keep leveling it up. I'm going to continue here. I have added a lot of white, just white to my yellow. It's still yellow, but it looks almost white. We're actually almost done. Mmm. <laughs> okay guys i'm gonna go fast because john says i gotta go and i gotta well, just find a little thing you have to go soon so i'm just going to come and add some of these light pops around especially at the front guys yeah this is yellow and the yellow mixture i had here and white so it's not really like a pure cat at that point but let's see here Maybe a darker little yellow. <laughs> I mean, it's slightly darker if I'm going to take it back into the forest. I can't have it be quite as bright. So you can see I'll come over there to the slightly darker one. But it's still quite bright. So it'll feel bright out here, but it won't be bright on the palette. Uh, 
Ah, okay. So Daphne wants to know how do I know that? How do I know? How do I know if you're going to put that up for sale so I can have a chance to sell it? This one uh, or the horse? I, I'm not. I, I think it was probably the horse. Um, and the way it, to do I, that, it literally is, I have to send a picture to a, like it'll be by this evening. So here's how you'll know when it goes up for sale. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I gotta write a description. Apparently, I gotta go do nails on a little like, clearly. I don't know how to tell you when. It uh, goes if, if 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 uh, moderator yellow is here, moderator knows, and maybe cat uh, cat or red you knows. You know, what we could do is mm. we could coordinate. Have you sent a newsletter out recently? Can't. Uh, yeah, it's still brokeny broken. Mm, I don't know how to do that. Oh, this one. This is the one that she wants to buy. Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did not pre-paint this, and we don't generally release yeah. show studies. Yeah, we. I mean, show 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 paintings. Yeah, the show paintings themselves we don't sell. We only sell the studies of them. Hmm. But in general, the way to know stuff is uh, we generally either do a uh, newsletter or a text message, and the best way to get to get those is to go to our website and it'll be, it'll prompt you. It'll say, do you want to sign up for our newsletter and our, and our, econ and our um, SMS thing? Yeah, but it won't let me send, uh, anyone who received a text message today for this and for Honey Short won't receive another text message about a sale because they per I have right. it set to prevent. So over, just in case I mess it, up and would send you like a zillion text messages, I have it set up, it won't send over you. spam. Unless it's something that's like, like a reminder that you need, but not like, Okay, it's not supposed to send you endless. Yes, it's it's only supposed to send you stuff the like to when it's like on on a very sparse reminder of I think that if we haven't and let us know if yeah. it's doing something so, different. Oh, and when you when you when you write me back, I can answer. <laughs> yeah, nuts and bolts. It should it should be days between it automatically contacting you. Like if mm. you if you like well. Well, but with us, but we can send out active messages for this month. We're doing a lot because it's like a not, they're not, it's just free right now. Well, it's more, it's sort of like uh, testing it. Uh, so, can you see how we add those bright pops of light to this outer area? And we have these bright pops of light in both our up front, right? You can be like, oh no, there's a, there's a little bit there. And, Far away, small dot. Yeah. Up close, bigger dot. I like this where I do it in the notebook, where I show the technique in the notebook, and then we do it. I feel like that helps. All right, I do have to go do my nails. I do, and I think we're at a good stopping place. That is a Just really good Generally, I think I want to do one last little thing. These are a little dark for me. Okay. So I'm going to take my uh, uh, light ground color that I had mixed earlier and maybe a little zinc white. Just like, I just want them just, just a little not quite as... No, nah, it's still too much. There we go. Oh yeah. Yeah, just a light, a light little tint or glaze because uh, other than that, it's just like too much. Can grab a little bit of this since I've got my glazing medium on here. This is just brushing. I'm barely touching my surface. Just exaggerating those little moments. Mm, maybe a little purple over here, getting kind of a darker color. Just making sure I've got nice shadows. I'd like to do that. I like to make sure I've got nice shadows. I'm going to come here and... Yeah, I can't. Okay. I am going to stop. I'm going to stop. <laughs> I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. <laughs> 
and stuff. But it's good, and I'm happy with it. And I like, I like, I can't wait to post the picture of this. I think it's fantastic. Um, this is a really good one. I cannot wait to see yours. Saturdays will not be this intensive. It will be a thousand percent less intense. Um, but you know, you voted on it, so <laughs> you got it. So I'm perfectly happy. I actually, I was worried you guys would vote on this one, and then also hoping you guys would vote on this one. So. I'm very glad that we got there yeah. and we got to do it. I don't think we get to do enough of this on our, you know, and Thank one hoots are coming. That little bee, that cute bee, this one hoot, the chickens, lo lower hoots, uh, the chick, the bee, the, the bee, I'll teach you that you can draw even if you think you can't. Yeah. And then the chicken, um, and then the fall tree and the snowman are all up and those are all lower hoots and the Christmas is coming. Horses going to get posted. I don't know if I'm going to do the lesson or not. You guys will have to convince me that I need to. And it's gonna. I'm like, well, I post it up. Vote if you want it, because I'm not. I like. I'm always like weirdly unsure of certain designs. Yeah. So you have to sometimes encourage me to get it over the line, um, and I'll probably put put that up for a vote, naming a separate, and um, let me know, and that'll be up for sale. And uh, check it every day, because right now what I'm doing is I'm I'm doing um, what's called show studies, where I'm doing some pre painted designs because mm -hmm. they don't have reference photos. And, um, so those will be for sale, those studies, and I've got some horse ones coming up, and I've got Christmas ones coming up, and landscape ones coming up, and there's some, if you thought that bunny and renaissance gear was coming up, and the crow was cool, what if you could buy a show study of that, so I'm gonna maybe, I don't know, we don't know if those are gonna get pre-painted, but just watch the paintings every day. Yeah. All right, please check out my art store. Thank you for your time. Thank you for spending every minute with me. That's incredible. You're incredible. I cannot wait to see yours. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. Wow, you just hold on. Got to give me a second to well, even. You're like, you got to go, go, go. So we I was do, like, go, 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 go. You're like, you're like, so go, go, go. I don't even have the go, go, go buttons ready. Okay, now go, I got go, my go, go, go. Get it. Now I got my buttons ready. You can say goodbye. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I'll see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>